Can I ask you something, Leo? Sure. Before every show, do you walk into a clothing store and tell them, I want to look gay? That's uh, that's an interesting, uh, you know, uh, question, Danny. Uh, now, if you think this looks gay, then you have no style. Because right now, I'm going for Cuban fresh. All right? I look like a Cuban guy. Wait. Just got off the island. I'm smoking cigars. I'm enjoying my life. I want to be a little flashy. I'm wearing the peacock. This is peacock in attire. All right? If I was gay, it'd be shorter booty shorts. All right? I'd be wearing a midriff. And I'd possibly, you know, maybe be on some wind so I'd be really tight and have the abs popping. You post about 16 ab pictures to your Instagram story every week. That is not true. I've stopped doing that since, since you, you were very, very adamant about me not doing it. And, and I, think I, we I didn't can, stop because of you, but I am out of shape right now. I can guarantee we can summon up some footage right now where your shorts are six inches higher, where your stomach is showing. And also your argument that you look really good only supports my argument that you look gay. Well, because gay people aren't exactly slobs in their style of well, dress. Look, as as a bi curious man that you are, you would probably I don't agree with that premise. You would understand a little bit about the gay style. So th- you know, in a way, gay guys dress fantastic. So it's really a compliment at the end of the day, and I appreciate it. Thank you for saying that I look good. I know you're a guy who's concerned with his image. I am not in the eyes of men, but women exclusively. That's all you yeah, care about. Yeah, I do. They are going to be a little less interested in a guy who might be butt-fucking in the bushes after they get married. Well, the good thing is this podcast is about 98% uh, male, I believe. Actually, it's probably 99.9% male. I think Sandrine might be the only female. Maybe Cammy and maybe my sugar mama sometimes. But, you know, I, uh, you know I, I would, I'm just giving them a little bit of, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm making like outlier choices, you know? What's so an outlier choice? What does means, that mean? It means it's, out of, it's a little out there. But it's, it's a costume, Danny. It's a costume for this podcast because I want to be flashy and I want to make sure the peak views. That's what it's for. The one Instagram post you threw up lately yeah. where you were on that cabana out in the middle of the desert and the mm-hmm. drone pulled away from your abdominals <laughs> yeah, until that. it was about 100 feet above you. Yeah, and then you ago. pretended like you were just waking up. Yeah. You shot that a month ago? No, How does no, a shoot no, like no. that posted, go down? I posted, I posted it a month ago. Me and my buddy. Austin, we can you out. find that on his Instagram so the audience can see that. it? It's a good one. I was uh, That was right after I, uh, my debacle on Paradise and everybody hated me. So that was after, for Whoa. people who don't understand, you got what in trouble. That? Yeah, yeah. On The Bachelor, yeah, and then you got Me, me Too. Out, and then, yeah, and on top of that, they were, well, it's, yeah. Austin, sure. can you let us know when you have that up? I would really love to hear Lightly about this. Me too. I want to know. How it went down? When you plan a shoot around yeah. a drone receding from your abdomen. Yeah, yeah. Who do you call? Uh-huh. What do you tell them you plan to do? Do you tell yeah, them yeah. it's going to be something else entirely? No. And as the day progresses, like, you know what? It might be better if it I'm was, shirtless. It was my good friend. You know Pri- what? Do you mind rubbing this baby oil on me? Well, it did it exactly go down like that. It was a very, um, you know, it was a very straight affair because we were there with two women. Uh-huh. So it was my friend Chris Morrison who has a Mavic Pro. It's a very nice little Mavic. Drone. It's called a Mavic. Is it not a Maverick? It's on Maverick, bro. It's Maverick. Mavic is a stupid name. Why would you think? Why would you say that? Because a Mavic isn't even a word. Continue. It's, it's I'm sorry. a great drone to steal a shot. Apparently, you can really just fly it in and out. Uh, Bam. No so, drone permit. No, exactly. So we're in. We these girls call us up last minute, and they go, "Hey, we got this Airbnb out in uh, the desert in Joshua Tree. Do you guys want to come? It's 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 glamping." And me and him were like, "You know what? Why not?" So we go out there. We take the girls' jeep. We, we go out there to the middle of the desert, and he was, you know, adamant about getting me views when all this stuff was going down. He's like, dude, if you do a, something looking pretty pretty good right now, what, while all these women are hating you, it'll probably get a lot of views. So why'd so, you post it a month ago? Well, this, it was a repost. I posted that way back in the day, and uh, it got like 350,000 views when I was really hated on Paradise. So that's why I did it. I kind of did it to... Per se, as the kids would say, you're really not going to like what I'm about to say, but uh. flex on some bitches. I was flexing on some bitches. I thought you have a girlfriend. Why do you I, have to flex on bitches? Not recently. This was the first time I posted but it. What was the motivation behind this second I time? I knew it would get at least 20,000 views, and I, and I posted it and it did. What's the point of... Austin, can you pull this up? I did for I the haven't. views. I did for the views, Danny. Can you let it play, Austin? I want to watch it one more time. Honestly, I really like the song. Is the song copywritten? Yeah, it's James Brown. Oh, uh, we can't yeah, do I'm that. I'm not going to play the audio. Look at that. Austin, you're learning. Good kid, dude. He came back sharper. It's like he's he went through the Navy SEAL training almost, we you know? We shot a video with Austin this weekend. Yeah. 
We treated him like in Laniggy, like Rat Dick Ralph, yeah. like Fan Jerry at the beginning. Yeah. We made him our bitch for one of the longest shoots we've done. Honestly, yeah. Got up 5.30 a.m. You got up even earlier. Yeah. Drove out to Havasu in Arizona. Didn't get back till after midnight. And this guy was suffering, I'm pointing at Austin, the entire day. And he with a smile on his face. I don't think a guy could have taken taken it in the ass any any bit better than he did. Austin, your spirits could not be dampened, dude. Not at, at all. Even the guy that completely ransacked you from behind, you turned around and you said, <laughs> "You got me good, man." I walked up to <laughs> this group of high school kids. One of them was really fat, and I could tell he was some sort of lineman on the school yeah. football team. I said, "Hey, I'm going to take this blonde haired idiot over here <laughs> onto the lawn." And I'm going to pretend to be talking to him about some stuff. It's yeah. going to be made up. And I want you just to run up and fucking smear his face into the dirt. Oh, God. This is as hard as you can. Think freight train. Yeah. And this guy hits Austin so fucking hard. And Austin is first is in serious pain. I can tell he gets hit in the solar plexus, wind knocked out of him. But he's laughing by the time he hits the ground. Oh, yeah. And we poured a gallon of Elmer's glue over your head yeah. and you, we didn't even let you wash it off. You had to go home to shower and wash it off. We made out with three women though, at least. Uh, we recruited a bunch Did of women to three? make out with them. At three, yeah. Oh. I made out with one. I think I kissed three total. Yeah. Oh. One bad. of them was like Not a in bad her 40s day, so, dude. Not so a bad day, good. yeah. Not a bad day for any for any man, any any mortal man. So, yeah, it was it was uh, really eye-opening to see his spirits. It's, it's nice to look at a kid with such high hopes, you know? Uh, those will be gone soon. They will. Life will uh, will get to you, buddy. It gets to all of us. Those hopes will recalibrate. Being in the Danny Mullen crew isn't all it's cracked up to be. Yeah. A lot of work, not much recognition. Yeah. And who knows that better than Fan Jerry? Right. Who we should call. What do you think? Absolutely. Inlaniggy pointed out that neither Fan Jerry or Inlaniggy follow each other on Instagram. We're getting to the bottom of it right now. And what else do we have in the works here? I'm working on getting Hollywood, California to call in. Because that, that would be amazing if you guys could rap battle. She said she was going to do it for three days. She was into the idea. Fun Jerry. What? I said Fun Jerry. How are you, man? He spelled it with a G. Yeah, how are you, buddy? I'm good, man. I'm good. You know, Danny wants to use you for one of his fucking gnarly bits again. You know this guy. Uh-huh. Of course. He's... Yeah, he, you, this is what you live for. I like that. I like that about you. But uh, listen, um, we got a question, man. It's it's really, we, we you know, we had a little road trip with fucking Inland Iggy. And, you know, I know you fucking hate that guy. But we, we, we came up, you know, we got some information. And Danny wants to get to the bottom of it. So, Danny, you want to ask him? Why don't you follow Inland Iggy on Instagram? I haven't followed him in a year and a half. I didn't ask you how long it's been. Yeah, why? why don't you follow him? And go into detail. Me. Oh, wow. Who first? Who first, Iggy? Fan Jerry? I think it was Iggy. You're not sure, though. And given that you're the guy who's always been skeptical and gossipy about him, I think it was you. It probably was me. Oh, wow. The truth comes out. God, we can never be a happy family. So you unfollowed Iggy. Just why? You were really fucking high one night and he posted a picture and it got a lot of likes? Um, no, I don't know. I don't remember the specifics. Fan Jerry, is it a racial thing? A good question. Is it a racial thing? A religious thing, perhaps. Inland Iggy does identify as yeah. Jewish. He does identify as a Jew. Is it? Yeah, I hate such fucking Jews. Oh my God. No Stop sarcasm. It. Pull, Fan Jerry, pull up your phone right now. Go follow in Lenigi. This is nonsense. Yeah, let's be a, let's be a happy family. Why? He's part of the crew. The crew contains five members. There's no reason one shouldn't follow any of the other. Okay, I followed him. Oh my god, that's nice. He and thank you. Me, and well, during, you, you know, gave him a millisecond. Of course, he doesn't follow you back yet, dumbass. And during this crisis, I believe it is a great time to come together as one. How did you? <laughs> When did you guys even find this out? On the trip up, Van, uh, Inlanigi said something along the lines of that piece of shit, Fan Jerry doesn't follow me. And I think he referred to, to your weight as well, which is fucked up. But He called your, S he called your ex-wife a slapper. <laughs> yeah. A slapper? Um, yeah, I don't know what that means, but yeah, he did. We're done fucking with you over this. You followed him. That's good. I just thought that was strange. Fan Jerry, how was your trip to New York? It was awesome. 
posted a couple good blogs. Don't give me the generic answer that you give to your mom and your coworkers. How did it go with your ex-wife? Um, I didn't see her for more than two minutes each time. How did those two minutes go? Yeah. Was there butterflies in your stomach? Yeah, yeah, seriously. Was... No, she brought her boyfriend. How was that guy? He doesn't talk to me anymore. You didn't even shake his hand? No. How do his teeth look, to be honest? Wait, let me back up a little bit. Let me, let me talk. Nah, he's, he has terrible meth teeth. Let's back up a little bit. Iggy, why do I keep calling you Iggy fan, Jerry? I don't fucking know, bitch. I, I don't mean to make you insecure. It sounds like you're already insecure about Iggy's presence in the crew. You pull down some dirt road in your Jeep Gladiator that you rented that you spent way too much money on. You see your ex-wife's car. Free upgrade. What? It was a free upgrade. Thank you. You see your ex-wife's car and you see her new man riding shotgun. Fill me on on everything that happens after that. I mean, I just ignore him, and then I say as little as I can to Kayla and try to be nice to her, and then I leave. So you guys meet at a park and ride? Where do you meet? We met at McDonald's on the way there, but we usually meet at the gas station right outside the rental car rental place. Does her man get out of the car? Uh, you did this time. He didn't. Wow, that was an time. alpha move. That dude, did, did he look like he wanted to fight at all? No, because I could kick his ass. Did he get out menacingly? <laughs> was he was his chest out? Was he upset? Anything like that? No, he's submissive to me now. I called him out once really hard. Like, What'd you say oh, to wow. him? What'd you call him out on? Well, he was. I was arguing with Kayla on the phone one day over text. And then he started texting me on her phone. And I just started the conversation hard. I was like, if you want to fuck with me, I can fuck with you because you guys were together when she overdosed on heroin. So you either encouraged it or you pissed her off so much that she went and overdosed. And either way, I blame it on you. And then I just, he stopped texting me. After well, that. that wasn't really fair. When people are getting high, sometimes they get a little trigger happy with the plunger on the needle. Jesus, man. I don't think your hostility was justified. You know, you know that from experience, Danny? Yeah. Oh, wow. We've all been there. Yeah, sure. Yeah, Tied we're, off in a we've bathtub. All, absolutely. We've all had uh, those days doing heroin before. Black tar, specifically. China white for me. I'm classy. Yeah, gotcha. Fan Jerry, you went off on him there, and you say he's submissive to you. What about his body language or the things he says gives you the idea that he's submissive when he gets out of the car in the McDonald's? He's, he's very quiet. He, he's, like, shy. Oh, wow. And he probably doesn't have a lot of body strength because of all the heroin. Yeah, I don't know if he does heroin, but he does weigh more than 130 pounds. And you wow. think you could absolutely kick his ass, Jerry? Yeah. Need I remind you, though, that you're uh, 1 in 16 in grappling match. matches? The last time he had a fist fight in the channel. Yeah, see, he's, he's an, a good old brawler. He's a Western style fighting. I could tell. I could tell. That's fucking ridiculous. <laughs> That's What's Fan the, Jerry. If I can tell one thing, it's that Fan Jerry would grab objects. He would grab objects. He fights like fucking Joe Pesci in Goodfellas. He surprises you with a bottle over the head. What are you going to do? Yeah, weapon of opportunity. What are you going to do when you get hit with a bottle over the head, Danny? Your BJJ is weapon not going to save you then. What would you do? If a fight went down, what would you do differently, Jerry, than you do in every single one of my videos, which is get tapped out within a minute? The whole time. So you're a champion boxer all of a sudden? I'm not a champion boxer, but I'm pretty good at punching people in the face. I'd be, I'd How many people have you punched in the face? Only Marines. I'd be willing to wager that he, I'd be willing to wager that Fangieri could win the California Golden Gloves. No problem. That's not true. 100 percent easy. Okay, Jerry. So this guy's submissive to you. Why are you being such a dick? Why do you talk he's shit? Because like he's useless. He's just a useless human being, and he's fucking up her life. More. He's the father of your child. Ask him uh, what I, I, I have a question. What, Fan see, Jerry. Now you're gonna get punched in the face. Oh wow. Well he's he's stepping in and doing the best he can as a dad. He's not. You think doing he's the doing best the best he, he can? can? He's, not even doing minimum. he's doing what he can, Jerry. He's a guy he punches in every day he and he shows Kayla a lot of love. And if you don't give him the respect that he's due, then shame on you. Danny Mullen, I swear to fucking God, I hope you get me a pregnant and she divorces you. Wow, what? We're not married though. Fanjir no, would show be up eventually. He thinks you're gonna marry me. Yeah, that's good. Are you a prophet now? Are you clairvoyant? I agree, dude. No, I see. I I'm see the spark. Pushing. I see I the hope potential. That one day, you and me get married. You and Mary have a kid. Mia have a kid, and then Mia leaves you and hooks up with some 19 year old black guy that Jesus. doesn't have a license or a job. Austin, oh. wait, your ex wife, her boyfriend's black. Yeah. Oh. I didn't know that. I thought he was just some white, honky, Ohioan meth head. Excuse me, no, heroin, heroin. 
black Ohio method. Oh, well, he's a nice guy. Come on, Jerry. Especially right now with all this black on white crime, yeah. it's a time to come together. It's a you time need to, to come together. Can you for can you call this guy on the air right now in a three way and apologize? That would be amazing. No. No. Fan Jerry, we, we're doing a show right now. Fan Jerry, that'd be amazing content. Please. I understand, but that's just not going to fuck that. How about this? How about you call him on the air and you ask him if you could bang his wife one last time and you could do it right in front of him? That's called a compromise, Jerry. How about that? That'd be funny. He, you could tell him you were high later on. You know, it's just like a joke. <laughs> He'll understand. He'll definitely understand. Yeah, that would be really good in my court case. <laughs> Fan Jerry. He called me and told me he was going to fuck my wife in front of him, in front of me. Fan Jerry, allow me uh, an analogy for a second. No, uh, because this is going to suck. Uh, no, no, no. Out, and it's not going to be complete. Hey. And then you're going to say, oh, that was a dumb idea. Fan Jerry, I what? have a 68. Fender, Stratocaster, great guitar. Sorry, you made me insecure about my metaphor. I lend it to you. After I lend it to you, I start sending your girlfriend cock pics. I start telling everybody around town you're a faggot, just generally oh. carrying on in a disrespectful way. How are you going to treat my 1968 Fender Stratocaster? I'm going to destroy it. Right now, you're talking shit on a radio show about your wife's new guy... You're talking about beating his ass, and he has got something even more dear to you than a strat. He's got your only son. Shouldn't you call this guy, make amends, so that he treats your beloved property better? He make, he's making Danny, good. It's not going to fucking happen, bro. What the fuck? You're, why don't you why don't you call him and just tell him that you you wish safety upon your you know his his and your family during this very difficult time. No, every time you guys call me, it's always some bullshit. Nothing is ever bullshit that we call you about. It's always good. Fan Jerry, how about how, what was it like driving in that pussy magnet of a gladiator? A nice change of subject. I like that. Fan Jerry, we've talked about this on the show a lot. He. Mm, the phrase burning a hole in my wallet, you know, the people, people who can't seem to keep any money in their bank account. They just yeah. like to spend money on things. Jerry has a little bit of that in his blood. He's obsessed with buying a Jeep Gladiator, yeah. even though financially, I don't think it's in the cards. Right. He rented one, though, on this trip to New York, and it's his favorite vehicle. So we just want to hear about it, me and Leo. Yeah. Oh, well, I loved it. Did you get some pussy? I took it off roading with Terry, went mudding. Is that allowed when you rent a car? Uh, you have to sign a special contract when you rent the Gladiator that you will drive it off-road. That's a joke. Yes. So you broke the law. I did not break any law. You went behind Enterprise Rentals back. They didn't say I couldn't off-road it. I'm... Were they pissed when you took it back covered in mud? I might call no, them and let them know. What do you think I'm I think we should, we should call Enterprise and, and tell them on. Jerry, oh. we need you to call up the yeah. front desk lady at Enterprise Rental yes. Car and confess your sins. <laughs> yes. Yes. No, absolutely not. We use, let me use your phone and do that. That's hilarious. <laughs> Let's All right. tell him right on the air. All right, we're going to call. <laughs> Man, Jerry, we're going to sell you out to Enterprise Rental. That's cool, because I'm going to use Enterprise. It's also, Fuck you. Who it's, did you use? Tell us who you used. It's going to take like five minutes to get a live person. No, I'm dude, losing no. energy about this. Tell us who you called. No, we don't need to know that. Fan Jerry, Leo asked if you got any pussy in it. We don't need to go that far. Did you interact with any ladies up there in New York? No, I didn't hang out with anybody. I just hung out with my parents. You weren't That's on cool. Tinder, Hinge, and your Instagram direct messages? No. Did your father look at you with an adoring eye? My father? No, yeah. my father hates me. Gotcha. Does he understand you're almost the 10K Instagram followers? No, that's why he hates me. <laughs> he wants you to be up in the uh, the five digits. No, he wants me to get a real job. Gotcha. You have a real you job. You have a real job. This is yeah, ridiculous. Yeah, but he thinks that I'm going to lose it because of my YouTube stuff. And I just keep telling him what, what do you make? You, you make 70K a year or more, right? Yeah. Your YouTube that. stuff's not even appropriate, much to my distaste. It's not even inappropriate. It's kind of inappropriate. Well, the time you got drunk and started swearing a lot. I didn't like that one bit. God damn it. I yeah. really wanted to call Hertz. Yeah, thanks. All right. Well, Fan Jerry, are you high right now? Very. Wow. Uh, we got to call you at like 10 a.m. or something when you don't have a chance to take a bong rip yet. I think he'd take, he'd look, he'd take one then. He takes yeah, as one soon as Leo said, do you want to talk? And I said, sure, and I rolled a joint. It, it what? Rolled a joint. Yeah, dude, he does that every time. It, it relaxes him. That's why he has that demeanor when he talks to us. He's so relaxed. Jerry, how much Mike's hard do you have to drink to balance out enough so we can call your wife's guy? 
um, more than I'm going to drink tonight. Does Damn. he have an Instagram? Not that I'm aware of. I don't even. I don't even know like his last name. His first <laughs> name's Tristan. What if? What if, Tristan's a good what name. if on his Instagram he just like in his bio it's like I'm fucking this white bitch. <laughs> just. I'm fu- what if it just said I'm fucking Fan Jerry's bitch and Fan Jerry was tagged? Yes, that's unbelievable. What if in his bio he says I'm fucking Fan Jerry's bitch? Do you then call him up? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, Fan Jerry, do you quiver with rage when you think about Tristan and your son in the backyard of some suburban home <laughs> throwing a baseball back and forth, breaking in a new glove, doing dad yeah, and son I stuff? I doubt he plays with him because Kayla doesn't either, so. So the kid just, what does the kid do? Is he in his room? Does he have a lot of action figures? Because that's going to really develop his brain. Seriously. He needs a lot of toys. That's like a really dog. If, if not, I, I swear to God, I'll send him some toys, dude. Let me know. I have a, I, I have a lot of my old toys. Maybe I'll just ship them some, uh, to, to your son. I'm serious. Do it. Dude, that, that's actually a good Fan idea. Jerry. Give so, me the address. So what's the kid doing for recreation? I don't understand. Put him. I don't know. Fucking off. Playing with it. Two-year-old that lives in the house. Fan Jerry, if there's one thing like, you need to do, to there's she, one. Kayla just smokes cigarettes all day. I'm assuming Tristan just sleeps all day. Dude, Danny, we need to get this kid in some sports. Yeah. Fan Jerry, what do you think would be the best course of action to get this kid up and moving around the house with two deadbeat parents? Uh, I don't know. I'm not having him live there anymore. What are you going to do to make that happen? I keep taking her to court. What the fuck else can I do? Hmm. Hmm. Pull some shady, stab her, steal him. Maybe we fly there and we try to get some, you know, incognito footage of this woman doing really shady things. Some private detective work. Yeah, some private Speaking detective of which, work. I just watched the Epstein documentary, as I'm sure a lot of the listeners have. We can talk about that and we can use some of the tactics shown in the documentary. Yeah. To survey Fan Jerry's bitch. And, and Is that, can I call her that, Jerry? And rightfully take away yeah. the oh, child yes. that she's raising. We're going to come back to Epstein, but Jerry, how's the single life going? Any developments? No. Uh, no, I'm just chilling. Are you masturbating to OnlyFans and Snapchat and all that, or are you more a Pornhub guy? For OnlyFans? Well, I was going to ask. Are you more of a? Pornhub that's very common nowadays. Fucker. It is. So a you good, go Pornhub. All right. It is a good common, or it is a good question. Fan Jerry, what do you type into the search bar when you're looking up porn? It's a good question. Uh, teen cream pie. No, you. You don't. like to see girls get came in who are between the ages of 18 and. 19, I guess. Teen, yeah. there's not much range yeah. if you don't want to go to prison. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Are you serious? That's really what you type in? That's usually what I type in. Danny, what do you type in? Uh, I will investigate this a little more, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Teen cream pie. So you get off on seeing the guy make a bunch of noises and then pull out and then some ooze drip down a leg. You like that? Well, not so much if they make noises. That's weird. Don't, don't judge them. You need, like, soapy tits in the shower. What the fuck? I do like that. Yeah. A cream pie, though, is all internal, Jerry. I don't see the stimulation. Yeah, but I like to come in women. Well, that's the thing. That's why he has a kid, Danny. <laughs> you get it? <laughs> I do get it. Yeah. Well, I didn't understand it. Yeah, but... yeah, yeah. So, Fan Jerry, teen came in. That's what he did. He came in a teen. Fan Jerry, have, have you ever, when you're searching teen... Has anything ever popped up and you start watching and you're masturbating? But then the hair on the back of your neck stands up and you get a feeling uh, this girl might not be 18. Uh, no. Well, Pornhub does a good job of keeping all that off of there. Do they really? No, they don't. I doubt it. I know if it comes to their attention, they're going to delete it immediately, but it seems impossible that some snuff films, some bestiality, some underage shit doesn't surface occasionally. I'm pretty sure it does surface. (laughs) This reminded me of something Austin said when he was hammered. Remember when he wanted to to start the the mobile unit for girls to come and film their cam shows? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. When Austin was shit-faced and high on the ride back from Havasu, he pitched one of the worst business ideas ever. (laughs) Yeah. And then he, no, hey, he it wanted, was a good business. He right wanted now. he wanted to start a little mobile unit for girls to come in and just fucking masturbate on cams. Not mobile. I would just, just I would just I just have a, a mobile home. Like that okay, I would turn home. into a multi camera porn studio. <laughs> that's that's awesome. Yeah. I love what Ian Ian was like. What they don't want to clock into yeah. work. The whole point of it's doing it from home. Seriously, you think the girls are going to want to commute? Walk into a mobile home and then masturbate in front of your creepy ass versus just do it on their nice Wait duvet. Wait until I get a little bit of clout, oh, and then shit. then they'll start coming. If because Austin... then the trailer is like this known thing. Like, oh, you didn't jack off inside the 
in, inside Austin's trailer? Are you yes. even a fucking cam girl? Uh-huh. If Austin has a flourishing cam mobile business after after our, he gets some clout on the, the Leo and Danny show, that I, I don't know what I would do. Well, That'd he's going to be a star in a main channel video soon. He is. Fan Jerry, how jealous are you going to get if Austin Schlosser starts blowing up like Iggy did? Are you going to not unfollow him too? Yeah. Oh, no. Dude, what he did to the guy in the basketball court was pretty epic too. You made the guy fall. Oh, yeah. You tripped him off. I was so drunk, I couldn't even shoot. Like, I, yeah, that's fine. It happened twice. I went up to two separate sporting things, a volleyball game and a guy just shooting around a basketball court. Yeah. I came in so hot, yeah. swearing at both parties, telling them that Austin would absolutely decimate them in whichever sports. Yeah. So we made him go one-on-one on a volleyball game. Yeah. The guy serves it and just shoots it way over the boundary. So Austin wins by default. He won. And then I made, I talked so much shit to this guy who was talking shit back and trying to fight me. Yeah, I was... made him play Austin one on one. He airballed a three, and then Austin played D on him, and the guy tripped over his own feet and ate yeah. shit. Like one of those, like Jesus where if, if it was in the, if it was in the yard, like in elementary school, you would have had like a, a a big section of young men yelling at the top of their lungs like oh it was one of those moments if it happened in prison the oh, guy that God. austin b would be sucking somebody's dick that night exactly he would, be, he would be blowing somebody and getting rammed in the ass right Where's after the taking bitch? a shit apparently. the guy who just tripped over his own shoelaces yeah, on the right fucking three-point yeah. line that guy jerry you've been great i think we're gonna call my mom jerry actually inspired this because he asked fourth of july are we doing tahoe this year oh boy Last year, Leo, as you know, we did some stuff that yeah. pissed off some neighbors. So we have to check with Mama Mullen before yeah. I can say anything for sure, Jerry. Is that Absolutely. all right? There's not going to yeah, be much good, going buddy. on up there either, probably. There's going to be stuff going on. You saw Havasu this weekend. Well, I didn't. I wouldn't call that much going on. That's enough for us to shoot a video at. That's true. And if we have our own cabin, it's going to be much more comfy. That's true. That's very true. All right, Jerry. You take care, all right? Yep. Peace out, man. If you start drinking a little bit and you uh, want to call Tristan up, make sure you call us first. Okay. You're not going to do Thanks, that, are buddy. you? No. All right. It's all right, Jerry. <laughs> Talk to you soon, man. Right. Bye. Hey, have you seen the Epstein documentary? Uh, no, did it? No, I haven't. What about you, Austin? I was listening to some of it with you. Is it creepy? It's all right. What's the gnarliest thing that guy did? The gnarliest thing he would do is he's taking chicks to his island out in St. Bart's or Barbados or wherever the fuck. And for some reason, when he gets into international waters or third world waters, he's cool with just flat out raping chicks. Jesus. He's got a couple different levels. When he's in Palm Beach, Florida, Jeffrey Epstein, the favorite, the famous finance guy who famously killed himself last fall, allegedly. Mm. When he's in Palm Beach, his shit is just getting a little high school girl, high school girls over. He has other chicks who are young or in their twenties go around to high schools, Jesus. like fucking smoking a cigarette out by the gates. So these girls are walking home, and then when they walk by, I go, Psst. "Hey, there's this rich dude who lives down the street over the bridge in Palm. He'll give you two hundred bucks to give him a massage." So these little sixteen-year-olds go over there thinking, "Oh, great, money for Christmas to buy my mom a gift." Oh God! And before they know it. There's an old Jew on his back with a full-on boner. Jesus. What a sick thought. Stroke until the goo comes out. So he would masturbate in front of girls? He would masturbate, which, obviously, I'm not condoning, but it seems strange that the psychological switch would flip, and he would just masturbate in Palm Beach, but rape in Florida. It's like a fucking dog that knows to only shit yeah. in the backyard. Yeah, and they were always underage? The girls he was raping in the island seemed to be of age. But yeah, the chicks would all be in high school who he was getting jerked off by in Florida. For the most part, the things he was doing were terrible. He wouldn't just do it once. He would get jerked off, then start flying the girl to France, to Africa, to the island. And then he would bring out the rape. He'd bring out the uh, the heavy cavalry. Where were the parents? He would go, and this is something that I hear all the time on Loveline with Dr. Drew. Abusers have some preternatural ability to pick out good victims. You can sense when a girl comes from a broken home, when she's been abused before, that that to her is just a way of life. And it's not going to seem out of the ordinary when some dude's masturbating in her line of sight. So they're much less likely to report it. Whereas somebody like Austin, 
who's got a nice haircut. He was probably raised going to church every Sunday. Trying to rape him is not so straightforward of a proposition. No, I wouldn't I wouldn't think so. That's a thing. You go for the victims. Yeah. For the most part, the chicks were treated horribly. They were raped. They were all but locked in fucking dungeons and shit. But there was one chick I had an issue with. Epstein masturbated in front of her once. She came over. She did 15 minutes of a deep tissue. And then the guy's beating himself silly. She leaves. He doesn't put her, his hands on her. Clearly a traumatizing experience. But, I mean, I've seen both of your penises for probably three times as long as she saw Epstein's. Okay. But she just completely goes off the rails, this chick. And she's acting like she was in a fucking third world dungeon getting gang banged by everybody in their parliament. Mm. In like Saudi Arabia or some shit. Mm-hmm. She acts like she just had the worst experience ever. And I thought, I, I wish you guys had seen this documentary. <laughs> I feel like I'm getting no support for this well, right no, now. Well, it's not that you're getting any, no, no support. I guess, is she outraged she was outraged about her experience or about what he did to everybody else. Maybe maybe she's outraged she didn't say anything. About her experience. She was saying that she was a beautiful flower before Epstein came along, and then he just picked the flower, threw it on the ground, and ground his boot heel into it. Mm. She talks about her heroin addiction, about cutting herself. Mm. She just completely falls apart because of this incident. And I had to say, I don't feel any sympathy because I feel like... Uh, you're just using this thing as an excuse to become a piece of shit. You know, maybe she didn't touch upon other experiences and that maybe maybe after that experience she did some things that she might regret and it further put her down into the into the hole in her life where she would feel like she has to do heroin to escape the reality. Uh maybe he was like a gateway predator to other predator to, to for her to like really just stop giving a fuck about life or see a different part of the world that she didn't realize was out there every day. That's true. But maybe she, you know, people often want to blame, you know, their their problems on somebody and I don't think that he's a terrible guy to blame it on but I, look, I Leo, there are worse things that happen to people sure, but I don't know, who are we to judge I guess? Leo, if you were a sophomore in high school, mm-hmm. you slid into second base and you kind of tweaked your ankle mm-hmm. you had to see a local sports doctor, it was a smoking hot chick yeah. And while she was manipulating your foot to get a look and maybe to try to work on the swelling, she just ripped down her pants and started rubbing her pussy. Yeah, it would be phenomenal. But uh, men <laughs> men are definitely in a different sexual sphere earlier. Like, they, they get more, I guess, sexually mature earlier. Like It's not true. That's lot. the opposite is true. They say that? Women... What? Absolutely why, is, why, is mature, way, why is it the way less men get get molested or is it just because we don't we don't talk about it well you have to think that women aren't programmed for short-term dating and uh-huh. constant sexual gratification yeah. so women aren't out there wearing a ski mask uh-huh. looking to fuck things that are illegal to well, fuck I got, I got a question for you I, I was talking uh Mitch my roommate signed me up for like a weird interview with this my, my buddy longtime baseball buddy was like I got this guy Who'd be great content? And uh, can you? Can I like you, how you say this. I yeah. got this guy. Yeah, you know, he was so excited about it. Who's I was the like, guy? sure. So he brings over this guy, and it's a, it's a dude. He's a Mexican guy who uh, used to work. He used to sell meth with the cartels, and then he was in. He got into porn here in the '90s. Then he uh, he almost got he got kidnapped and, and almost killed because of because of the meth. And then then he was addicted to meth, and he came out of it. But what he talked about a moment in his youth that he said kind of triggered his bad behavior. This sounds like he's going to come on and be the second incarnation of Rat Dick Ralph. He, it, 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 Rat Dick Roger. Yeah, Rat Dick Roger. He's, he's, uh, his, name is in, uh, his, name is, his real name is Enrique, but his, uh, he goes by Angel. He's a Mexican guy with is, is an it, accent. Is it a, we just want to bring every crazy, crazy person into in. our squad, but we yeah. it's maybe a good thing that we learned our lesson we with Rattick. We learned our lesson, yeah. I don't think we can do that too much. I mean, we can keep... Maybe when you have a studio one day, we can interview a guy like that, and then, you know... Anyway, this guy said, and I want to, I want to ask you how you would react if this happened to you or how you Lay think you me. would feel. You're five years old, okay? I can think back. All right. Playing with Tonka trucks and Brontosaurus plastic toys. Nice. I liked that. I was, I was more. I was a Batman and Robin, and uh, no, I was Batman. Batman and the Joker guy. But anyway, so we're sitting. You're sitting there. Your mom's like, I need to get out of town. He was an only child. Not an only child. He or was he an only child? I think he had like a sister. But anyway, his mom's like, I'm I'm leaving out of town for a little bit. I got to go Roger. Sure, Rattic Roger. He needs to leave. Got go it. out of town. And his mom is like, I'm going to leave you here with this. 22-year-old uh, babysitter. She's a cousin. 
She knows you, you know, she's seen you grow up. She's a she. She's a she. Enjoy yourself. I'll be back in a couple days. He says, as soon as his mom left, that within a couple of hours, she was making him lick different things off her vagina. He was what kind of things? Years old. Like, we might not have a crime like, here. I got to hear like more. <laughs> salt, cream. Wouldn't salt, salt in the vagina well, like, hurt? Yeah, well, I, the phrase I, salting a wound is a thing would, for a reason. Like, it hurts. She would like, oh, try the salt on my vagina kind of thing. Like it's a margarita? She yeah, salts the yeah. rim? Yeah, she salted the rim, dude. Did he have to pour lime juice in his mouth after? I believe he did, and he had a tortilla with it as well. But anyway, th- this all happened to him, and he says he might have gotten triggered enough to, to be you know to be a drug dealer, A. And then he really knows the ins and outs of, of how to cook some meth, I'll tell you that much. He went deep into it. And then he said he got into porn because of it in the 90s. And then he would also fuck, he would cuck dudes. Like, well, he would get paid by, like, rich men to, to like, fuck their wives in front of him. And he has a big cock, apparently. He went off the rails. Yeah. And the question is, was it this experience yeah. with the babysitter? And he, he kind of points back to it thinking that that was kind of it. Yeah. And what do you think? What would, what would you have... That would have been a little traumatizing, no? Totally agree. When I was five, when I was 10... Hell, when I was 15, that might have been. The, yeah. I think I got my first blowjob. Yeah. 10 years after this guy right. ha- had a face full of pussy hair. Right, right. Is that enough to explain the outcome? Because there are a lot of people who were just fucked up mm-hmm. and who were going to do drugs and who were going to be in the porn industry without right. abuse. Right. But now that I rethink it, there aren't that many of them. Not that if many. you're raised in Orange County like Nico is, you get a loving mom, a loving dad, some brothers. Yeah. A parrot. Yeah. You're not going to wind up in the porn industry it's or with a heroin parrot, needle yeah, in your arm. Yeah, own. exactly. So this guy, and this guy was doing a lot of meth. He said uh, it's the great, the best high, especially when it's good meth. What about heroin? Inland Iggy's he, he, done both, and Inland Iggy swears by age. He says he only went from he, weed and meth, man. And he said meth was kind of enough for him. But then, yeah, it was the hardest thing ever to come off. But, but what, what happened was when they... They beat the shit out of him so bad and burned half of his body when they drug dealer him. people. Yeah, drug dealer people trying to steal his stash and and they left him for dead and he his recuperation was like a year and a half from the you know the head trauma and like and he, he says he saw a couple angels and they, they told him he was a good guy <laughs> and that uh, he needed it you know change his life and he did and he has been sober for like twelve years. I'm seeing an angel right now, Archangel Austin. You said one of your buddies got smoked in Texas because he had an ounce of weed and some cartel came in and just shot him dead. Uh, I don't know if it was a cartel, but it was an illegal immigrant from Mexico who was probably like in his mid twenties. I'm sure he had some association. Give Assumably, him- yeah. So the full story was you had a buddy who was out there on his skateboard flaunting the fact that he just procured an ounce of weed, talking about it, being stupid. He goes back to his place. He boots up the N64, maybe packs his first bowl, and then an illegal just storms into the fucking house with a gun drawn, takes him out into the desert, and executes him. No, nah, like, I mean, my, my friend sold weed. Like, he was my dealer. And, so he uh, went out somewhere. So someone was like, hey, I want to buy an ounce. Uh, I'll come to your house. So they pulled up in front of his house, and when he went to their car to give him the weed, they just grabbed him and kidnapped him, basically. And then scary, scary. they killed him. Yeah, and they left him in a ditch, and they took his weed. That had to have been some sort of cartel or some organized drug crime group. Inside job type thing, yeah. They, Possibly, They had yeah. information. They had information. Well, but look. it was three, like, younger guys. It could have just been, like, money. But, I mean, mm. it could it could have been bigger than that. I mean, they my friend, like, guys? a lot of dealers, like, they talk shit to each other, you know, and sometimes you get Yeah, turf wars. Up. Look. Just don't sell drugs, huh? Just agreed. Don't any, sell drugs. Any profession where you have to worry about ending up in a shallow grave, yeah, it's not worth doing. No. So that means drug dealer, prostitution ring, hitman for the mob. Yeah, hitman for the mob. Even just a gopher for the mob. Just don't work for the mob, dude. You know what I mean? Um, Hitman's kind of respectable. That's pretty badass. Well, if you're a hired hitman that doesn't like that. You know, never comes into contact with whoever he's like dealing with, and you have to like, you know, you're very well trained, and maybe you were like an ex Navy SEAL. Sure. Other than that, you know, you probably shouldn't kill people for a living. It's per- it's probably a terrible way to live. Could you take a life, Leo? I don't think so, man. I don't think so. What if somebody was inside your house? Yeah, yeah. In that way, I think I could. I would. I would be fucked up by it. But I think like if I had to defend myself, or somebody was in my house and they were threatening to kill me, yeah, absolutely. I think so. Yeah, I could do it. But I wouldn't feel great about it. There was a guy that came. We were we learned tactical gun training from this guy that was an LAPD legend at when I was doing stunts, and 
he told he told us that 99.9 percent of the cops that ever shoot and kill someone no matter it was an ms-13 guy a guy trying to kill him a guy that had just killed a woman and was fucking her dead body if you kill a guy whoever the fuck it is 99.9 almost every single cop has to be in therapy twice a week for life most quit most quit the force a lot of them commit suicide. There's a high suicide rate in cops. No matter who it is you killed, about less than 1% handle it well, can have lunch the next day. It's either you can have lunch right after or you're fucked for life. That's what he said. I feel like I would be able to do it. Mm-hmm. Well, I think most people would think the same. You're a complete sociopath. You are a blood, so. And you are I'm in a gang. You are in a gang. And in initiation, we had to do something similar. I mean, I didn't take a life. Was it but the flashing somebody light? Somebody got thing? stomped real good. What's the flashing light thing? That's is that's that used to be the rumor that that was in the initiation. If you were a blood, you had to go in your car, turn your headlights off at night, and the first car to flash his lights at you, telling you to put your headlights on, turn around and go try to kill him. Follow him. Yeah. Pretty fucked, huh? Nice, nice old lady. Nice little. There's no way that's true. That's that was the 100 percent factual thing that I read when I was at UCLA this was in uh, some book uh, this gang member wrote that was very popular at the time I'll, I'll get you the title there was a fat guy who I went to high school with his name was Leo too incidentally nice you would disown him if you knew him just for sharing your name yeah fuck that guy. he was fat he had a flat top but he became a Nortenio right after high school and it was in his Facebook bio it was on that's all they had back then was Facebook all right he was psyched, and I don't think he had to play the chicken flashing lights, go kill I that person that, game. The Nortenos are notoriously violent, too. I remember uh, there was like something happened when I was up in school at uh, Cal State Stanislaus. Turlock, California had some Nortenos close by in Modesto. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you, not every gang's going to be like that, but it, we're not. We're also not talking about current gang. Like when We're talking heyday, like in the heyday when they, it was easier to get away with crimes in the 90s. It was easier to get away with crimes in the 80s. Um, a lot of the times they have the, you know, the, I read somewhere that they, they had the no person involved thing where cops, if there were something happened in Compton or something, they would just, they would never even investigate the crimes. And I, I, I experienced that because my friend who I played baseball with in college, he got shot at a party. He was a Latino guy that was dating a gang member's ex-girlfriend. So they had a fight. He had a fight with a guy at a party in high school, this gang member, and he left and then his girlfriend he goes, oh, he left, uh, you know, my ex left, just come back. So he comes back. The guy's waiting there for with him, with, waiting there for him with a gun. Shoots him in the back of the head in front of 60 people. Nobody ever heard of the investigator. Nobody ever heard of the guy. The guy apparently fled to Mexico. They never did anything. No, We never heard any details of them trying to do anything, nothing. He wasn't a gang member. The guy, the guy my, my buddy Neville, he was just a nice ball player. He had long, curly hair. He was not like a... By any means, like a shaved head, like dude that was like had been initiated in a gang, he had no tattoos. He was just well, yeah, with a name like Neville, you can't be that gangster. Yeah, exactly. His name was Neville, and he was a dude, a nice guy from Nicaragua, and just you know, he was his his mom came. It was he had a single mom, and his his brother's doing really well though. He turned to you know his brother. Oh, we were all worried, but anyway, no. What I'm saying is, it that I've experienced that, so I'm pretty sure if they were in Compton and they had to do this thing, and it was just they killed a couple of minorities, maybe they didn't. And investigate the crimes and that was a thing they could get away with we should probably touch on the riots that have been going on yeah, in LA man, it's crazy out here have you you're pretty close to some of them no I haven't been out there in the streets with a ski mask throwing a Molotov yeah, but- however me and my girlfriend last night tried to go get dinner there was a curfew at 7pm mm-hmm. it came over text message right. just like when a kid gets kidnapped over your phone an involuntary text message I'm still trying to figure out how to block those notifications you can't I don't give a shit so yeah, what if a Chevy Impala is fucking last spotted green paint coat, like driving west on the freeway? Like, what am I going to do? Well, just start speeding in that direction and run the guy off the what road. If you see the guy. I am so unobservant. I, what well, am I gonna do? it's, you know, what, what if it was your child in there? The Amber Alert? Are you talking about the Amber Alert? Yeah, they're bullshit. You don't want the Amber Alert? I want to block phone? the notification. What is wrong with you? They do nothing. No, you're not going to want to block those notifications. Those are the same ones that are going to tell you if there's an incoming missile. No, yeah, I don't care. Happen about in Hawaii, an incoming I, missile is going to smoke everybody. That's not well, even something. That. That's you not can, my concern. You go deep in underground, but it tells you it's like middle-aged male with a Oregon license plate, last seen on freeway three one zero going north. Like, wow. 
Like, what am I going to do with that? Well, they want, if you're there, I mean, I'm pretty sure me and you could, we would be, we would follow the guy. Come on. We'd say, dude, being heroes. If a camera was rolling. Being, yeah, exactly. Being, Ellen, dude, we'd be on Ellen DeGeneres and you could tell her off, man. Imagine that. <laughs> Imagine me and you get on Ellen, dude. If I like can resolve my beef with Ellen DeGeneres. <laughs> Ellen, I have something to tell you. What would you tell Ellen? Could I be Ellen and you be you? I got nothing to tell Ellen DeGeneres. I'm sorry. Damn. I've heard she's a cunt, but I don't know any of the reasons why. Oh, dude. Who's a guy, who's a, who, who's a talk show? host that you would just tell off and have oh. something to say what is why jimmy is, fallon why is my wife i think jimmy fallon is just a kiss-ass puss with no spine right, can i, play I don't fallon? actively dislike the guy though can i play jimmy I don't fallon know if, there's not enough passion or there's not oh, enough jay leno great i think jay leno's a nice guy i love jay leno yeah i've met him he's great i think david letterman's overrated and kind of a douche all right do you want to do you want to can i should i be david fucking letterman then? but i've just said to you the only thing i have against david oh, letterman i don't know that much about him i just God. think he's overrated and Damn you want to do the what conversation about the gay guy? what about the no he's not gay what about the fat guy james corbin, corbin? james corbin oh, he's the worst of all all right well you guys should be james corbin but again the depth ah. the depth of my dislike leo i'm sorry i'm sorry i didn't get much sleep last night but the depth of my dislike is you drive around with pop stars singing like a preteen right. in cars, mm -hmm. a Range Rover, and you're fat. Oh, Other than that, I got nothing on the guy. Well, uh, that would have been a good improv. You would have called James Gordon me fat in uh -huh. the middle. Yeah, that would have been interesting. Yesterday, though, the riots. Yeah. They moved the, the curfew back from 7 to 5, so I have to scramble to get food because it's 4.45 last time I looked at my watch. Yeah. So we go out. This city is a fucking strange place right it's now. Very, very strange. It's a little scary. I mean, they were th that big mall that you we fucked around in by my house. It's the fifth biggest mall in America or top five. They were trying to get into it this morning, apparently. They, the pro the writers, the writers, yeah. And it, you look, I. It's it's sad that that's what they're turning to, you know, to try to make a difference. But would do you think that what they're doing is more or less effective than silent protests? Because silent protests, they've been doing them for years, man. Nobody cares. I mean, the news is going to put the looters mm. out there. It's a good question, man. I was just listening to the Adam Carolla show to get Adam's take on it. Oh, cool. And what Adam was talking about, he had an attorney on. He's Colin Kaepernick's attorney. Oh, cool. He defends people from police violence all the time. He gets big settlements for families. And this guy who's defending black people who are getting shot, he's defending Colin Kaepernick or doing some sort of litigation for him. He says that it's completely the media because white cops shoot white people constantly. Black cops shoot Mexicans constantly. But all the news cares about reporting is an incident where a white cop yeah. is treating a black and, person. And, and that's when you look at who uh, who's above maybe the government, people that own the media, whoever owns the media, they're putting this out because like us, they need the views. And they know that this is going to impact yeah. like, oh, like, look, now we can't fuck with the with this virus anymore. We can't mess with them. So now we're going to incorporate this black on white thing that this is going to rile everybody. Up. I think the first thing you said is all you need to say that people know it's going to drive massive views if it's yeah, racially it's charged. Just, it's views at, at the end of the day. And yes, look, and all, I know that somebody else is running the, the, you know, the world that we don't know about, I guess. It could be Archangel Austin. Yeah. But I know this. When I was younger, before social media, before this clickbait news era. The idea of white and black to me almost meant nothing. Like, I was just thinking back. When I was in community college, one of my best friends on campus was this black dude, James. Mm -hmm. We'd hang out during lunch. We'd go get beers after class. We'd talk all class, exchange notes, study together. It never even popped into my head. Right. He's black. Right. I didn't think about it once. Yeah. And then once I got to college and I started getting lectured all the time, oh, you and all your ancestors are evil people. Right. You need to bow down before any minority woman, any trans person. You know what? In fact, anybody in a wheelchair, they're better than you. Once you start hearing that stuff, what it did was it just made me, like, I guess, extra nice to anybody who was black who I ran into because I felt bad. And I felt this white guilt all of a sudden that was put on me by school and by the media. But I felt yesterday, Leo, after these riots and after the footage of the cop with his knee and that man's neck, like, I felt afraid to even look anybody who was black in the eye. Look. I'm it, afraid to make... I, 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 I feel like they all hate me right now. I, I would love the idea of doing an Edward 40 hands in the riots, but I'm pretty sure we'd we'd get attacked. It'd be difficult to defend ourselves. You yeah. saw me try to fight last time during Edward 40 hands. Well, you... 
the guy was so little and you had he wasn't going to even really reach yeah. your head but i'm pretty sure you could defend yourself but yeah if we were completely hammered and something was happening like Austin or something, you know, I feel like being sober would be a lot but better. But do you get what I'm saying, though? Yeah, I do. We're well, being manipulated. We're being but, mani- but do you, manipulated. But do you, have you felt this? When I go around the city streets right now, when I'm jogging, walking down the street, I'm afraid to even glance over and see if a black person is looking at me because I'm afraid to see rage in their eyes yeah. and think, this white motherfucker, he doesn't give yeah. a shit. Yeah. I had to I stick my could... boot knife up under this kid's ribs. Well, you'd, you'd talk your way out of it. I was talking to my black neighbor, Tony, who I love down the street. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was talking to him today. Him and I always talk. He used to have a Coke problem, he revealed to me. Mm-hmm. Used to get in a bunch of street fights. I gave him a tip about the uh, jerk-off parlor that's over by the 7-Eleven. Oh, nice. Yeah, Leo told me about this jerk-off parlor. He told, some time ago, he told me about this jerk-off spot. And uh, my neighbor, Tony, I felt yeah, that he deserved online. that information. It's very good ratings online. Him and I were talking about my... Uh, my black neighbor, Tony, about my stints down in the Mexican whorehouses. Oh, Jesus. I had to tell him these stories to gain his trust because yeah. he's got kind of a gnarly past, so I wanted to bond with him. So I was like, I don't even... He might have been talking about the weather or football mm-hmm. score or something, and I was like, oh, Tony, these Mexican whorehouses or something else. And yeah. he's like, what? And I'm like... And then I told him the story about the time I got a hand job <laughs> in a booth that was in the restaurant slash bar area of the whorehouse strip club yeah. for $25. Just like in open space, people watching just got jacked off. Really? I never heard that story. I was down in Mexico. Wow. This is gnarly. Should... I have a buddy who owns a timeshare down there. It's a penthouse mm-hmm. on a really nice resort in Puerto Vallarta. I would die to go back. Wow. You go down there in the height of January, and it's like the sun is... As high as it is in mid-August here. It always feels like summer. We get down there. It's not spring break, so it's a little dead. But we go to these fucking whorehouses. And when you're in a whorehouse, you don't need no college cooch. God. Dude, $25 to get a hand job. The girl just jerked me off into my jeans. And I pulled them up. And I was just... I don't even think I was wearing underwear. I was wearing a thin layer of cum on my left how, thigh all How night. many people were there? Men? Women? There were very few people there, period. Okay, well, but then that's not that bad. The guys I was with, the guys I were with fucked a hooker apiece for $100 each. You know what? I, I got blown that night, too, Leo. Really? I got blown, and this chick had a fake ass and huge tits. Oh. And I'm not too proud to admit this, but she was sucking my dick, and I kept trying to finger her, and she kept pushing my hand away. Well, yeah. This was an actual whore that you got blown by? Well, she was sucking my dick for money. Okay, yeah. I'm She's... not a logician, but that seems to add up. I believe she was an actual whore. I was trying to finger her. She kept pushing my hand away. And then I think her spirit was so broken, she probably had things done to her like Epstein was doing to all his ladies. Like mm. uh, I just... It is an instant her spirit just completely broke and she just like stopped batting my hand away mm-hmm. and I just started fingering her ass. Really? And I feel kind of bad about that right now. So I was just Jesus. fingering her ass while what? I was getting blown. What? Why do you feel bad about it? Because she, I she enjoyed it. She Did clearly she show any like enjoyment in that. I was hammered, so it's difficult to remember. Uh-huh. But I just feel like this poor woman had been through enough and I shouldn't have insisted on the ass fingering. Yeah, well, look, it's good that we all change and we all do immature things especially when we're drunk and as we get older the fact that we can reflect on those things is that's the point we all get better do you we, think what i did was wrong i believe it was slightly wrong i would she like was to, sucking a, my dick though maybe, maybe i world, changed my mind when i was getting blown and she was a, molesting me in a perfect world i would i would hope that she enjoyed it i would hope that you were one of the better looking men that she had to blow for money i would mm-hmm. hope that you were kinder to her when she left. I would hope that you grabbed her hand and maybe kissed it as she left the door. Maybe given her hopes that I would take her up to America, get her a green card? Yeah, exactly. Was she cute? I was hammered, but she had a fake ass and fake titties. Mm. It doesn't take much to get my penis hard, Leo. Mm-hmm. I know. I know. Austin, have you had any experience with augmented body parts? N- no. What, what do you mean augmented? Fake, like, tits, fake, 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 ass, fake, fake tits, fake ass, fake nose, fake lips, extensions even. I thought you were talking ears. about transsexuals. Fake uh, Botox in the forehead. Have you ever had sex with a girl that had Botox? Um, no. I mean, I know people that do Botox. Have you ever they're... fake? Have you ever felt fake tits? You know what? I have Have you ever fucked a girl who had a fake Prada purse? I'll lower it down to yeah, that. Yeah. Have you? That's not a real mm, question. What about no. fake fake Louis? 
that's luggage. It's, if you fucked a girl that had fake I wouldn't know the difference, but I, I've never been done. with a I know he has. I know he has. You fucked a girl that had fake Louis Vuitton luggage. Don't fucking lie I to want me. I some fake Louis Vuitton luggage. It well, sounds yeah, great. It does. It looks Anybody cool, who can tell the difference is a fucking asshole, asshole anyway. Yeah. Well, maybe not. Because if you meet somebody really influential and you're trying I, to network, you'd look like sort of an Armenian cornball if you had fake Louis luggage. That's true. Do, they, was, there do was, the Armenians like fake stuff? They like fake stuff. Some of the Armen used to always come in with fake Gucci slippers and all kinds of stuff. I know. I call these things. Yeah, they love that shit, but they also buy the real stuff a lot. Um, yeah, the, the designer stuff appeals to everyone. I, I feel like people with money, but people without money love What's the designer. your most expensive clothing or accessory item you've ever purchased? You've um, ever purchased. I know you're purchased. Yeah. Well, let's give two answers. Your sugar mama has purchased for you yeah. and you've purchased for yourself. Oh man, I'm, I'm cheap, dude. I don't buy a lot of luxury items, but my sugar mama bought me... Um, probably the assortment of bracelets by M. Cohen was probably um, $1,500 because she bought me six bracelets and they're all like... Is that one of them right there? This is one of them. This Leo's is probably, wearing... It looks like it would sell for about $15 well, at Pac Sun. No, it doesn't. It's pure silver. And Who it's can like tell? Heavy. Dude, Who you're can right. tell? Fucking feel the weight of this thing, dude. That like, thing's heavy, dude. It just means it's more likely to fall into the, the drain at a pool. It's heavy, dude. You're going to lose that. This is pure silver. Yeah, but whatever. So they, they're they designed by like a, a famous designer named M. Cohen. And like uh, he designed like uh, all of uh, Chris Hemsworth's jewelry and he and his wedding ring and shit. And, and they were specialty items. And she got me like six of them. So that was probably that was probably the most expensive stuff I wear. Uh, my girlfriend got me a Gucci ring that's like 450 bucks. It's pretty cool. That that a cheap bitch. You <laughs> Your sugar mama shelled that way more cash. Then, uh, yeah. I, I had a phase. I was in Europe when I was in high school. Mm -hmm. There are probably some stories from that Europe trip. This weird thing came over me. My parents, middle class, but were always very supportive, very generous with money and gifts. So I got it into my head when I was younger that we had way more money than we actually had because mm -hmm. my parents were spoilers. I'm sure your mom was too, to a certain extent. Uh, yeah, my mom uh, definitely spoiled us a lot, but my dad really gave us the value of a dollar, man. He was he was always he was pretty frugal. Oh, fucking Jew. <laughs> I'm in Europe. I decide to walk into a sunglass boutique and just buy, on a whim, a pair of $175 Ray-Bans. Mm. Ray-Bans Ray or Bans? Ray-Bans. You can say it either way. I think you can say it's Bans. It's Ray-Bans. I like Ray-Bans. I like Ray-Bans. It's more too. European. Ray-Bans. So I buy those, and then my mom calls me up. Hey, Danny, I see there's a $175 charge. Mm. It's La Petite Glasses Boutique. Mm. And I say, Mom, I'm sorry. The rays out here are brutal. Uh -huh. You don't want me to come back with burned retinas, do you? Mm -hmm. So she's like, oh, gosh. Okay. The next day, my kleptomania, greed, uh, materialism returns. Oh, my God. I might have had a couple beers at lunch. They don't card over there if you didn't know that. Mm. I walk into a fucking Prada store. I try on like six pairs of glasses. I don't know why I decide my Ray-Bans aren't enough. I put on this. Well, first of all, I see up on this segregated little shelf. The special pair of glasses. It was as if they were radiating light. The angel choir came into my ears, and I thought, those are going to look great on me. Oh, my God. I put them on, Leo. I go, whoa. <laughs> and I had them until cameraman, late, at cameraman Nate lost these fuckers in Slab City during the first that shoot. sucks. He had to wear them, and he put them down on a fucking bar. My head had grown a little bit. They didn't look as good anymore. But when I put these on, on my 17-year-old face... Any agent in Hollywood would assign me to whatever boy band they were forming. They would have put me smack in the starring role of any Nickelodeon show. Shit. I looked so good, Leo. What was the price tag? 275 euro. Ooh, that's, a, that's like 300-something bucks. Wow. Danny Mullen slides his mom's Wells Fargo card across the counter, purchases it. Oh, my God. Ring, ring. Danny, did your card get stolen? No, Why? Well, somebody just spent almost three hundred dollars at a Prada store. It was like I was some fucking. Did they? Did they tell you to return it? No, I guess they. You kept it. Oh no, I looked so good in these, Leo. No. There was. It was going to take a crowbar where, and a pistol to get them where, off my face. Where did you go to Europe? What, what was this Euro trip? This Euro trip was. My sister had formed a really good relationship with the honors history teacher at Casa Roble High School. I did not try in high school. I was caring about jujitsu at that point. I cared about getting pussy, getting drunk. School wasn't on my list of important things. But this honors history teacher took everybody on a glorious tour of Europe every summer. Wow. 
And my mom, my dad, they said, Danny, you should really look into go. Just go to one meeting. I went. It sounded great. And just because my sister was such an angel in school and he remembered her, he let me come. Wow. Everybody else was a fucking honor student poindexter, Leo. Hmm. I get there. I mean, my feet have been on European soil for 20 minutes and I already got three pints in me. Really? You you just went there and started drinking, got hammered? I got hammered, Leo. You didn't care about your sister's reputation at all. I didn't care at all. And all the nerdy kids worshipped me. So, they were, of course they They did. were sweet. They're like, this is a legend. They were... It was like the my horrible influence on the crew. Nice. Like, you see, you watch like a, a Fan Jerry video when he's vlogging. Mm. Me and I were watching one the other day, and he's like being a dick and talking shit about architecture in Reno. Mm. Some fan kid meets up with him. Fan Jerry calls him a faggot. I was having oh, wow. that effect, because you know that's totally outside of his... 100%. I was having that effect on these honor students. But one night, this chick, and she's actually the chick who tells me I have a small dick in the high school reunion video. She was yeah. that same fucking girl. Yeah. That girl was an honor student who was on the trip, and she's hooking up with this dude, Mark Jackson, whose mom ended up killing herself, and I think he kind of lost his mind. He got really into Jesus. But at this time, I think he was getting busy in this fucking bed with this girl, Michaela, who told me I had a small dick, and I come home shit-faced, oh like, like fucking shirt How buttoned old up you? wrong. <laughs> like, oh, fuck. Just like the caricature of a guy who comes back drunk from a pool hall and like pisses off his wife. Oh. I just kick the door open, walk in, and I say, Mark, get this cunt out of the fucking room. No. She goes, Daddy, I'm telling Mr. Austin. Just oh, gets up, God. runs out. The next day, I'm hung over as shit on this bus to Austria. Yeah. He walks down the aisle and he says, Danny, you're forbidden from drinking for the rest of the trip. Nice. How old are you? 17. Jesus. Listen, this does not sound like anything, uh, you know, I've ever, I've ever even had the opportunity to experience. That's cool. That was probably a nice trip for you. And not much has changed because uh, I'm pretty sure that if Inland Iggy was banging Mountain Girl in a hotel room in within any area that Danny could get to, to this room, he would do the exact same thing. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, dude, uh, Leo, what the fuck's wrong with me, dude? That, I'm sorry. I'm like, in my head, I'm circling back to my, to the shit you my done? bout with materialism. I, I'm telling you, man, I always, I've always thought, like, even the, the, the materialistic side that you had, or you, you had to spend $400 on two different pairs of sunglasses for absolutely no reason. Uh, I think that something might have happened to you. Hey, you know what else is really strange? An even creepier obsession I had when I was younger. I was obsessed with deodorant. You would sniff it what wear it what kinds did you like, like I, what, old sport this does seem old like old spice old spice this does seem like some weird psychological defect that was caused by a man yeah. who like reeked of brute cologne sodomizing me yeah that's what it seems like it's a product yeah, yeah but I would make my mom take me to Target or CVS almost every day to try out a new stick of deodorant Really? How old are you when this would happen? This was young. This was elementary school. This was probably in fifth or sixth she, grade. You never thought that... May, they never decided to put you in any kind of therapy or anything like that? My mom acknowledged it, too. She told me, or she would say as a joke, Danny's obsessed with deodorant at the dinner table to my sister, and I would get all insecure about it. And No, I'm not. Uh, mom, th I, Speed Sticks releasing a new scent this autumn. Can I make sure I'm on the waiting list for? Oh my god! I can't believe it took me that long to think up a brand for that joke. I get obsessive about weird stuff, dude. Yeah. And maybe that's what's translated into like my obsession with the YouTube thing with jujitsu. Yeah. yeah. Maybe it was healthy, but it was fucking scary for a while. You seem to have a little bit of of, of the OCD. I feel like a lot of the times on shoots. Um, you know, you get fixated on doing something yeah. in a bit and you have to do it. Jumping off the bridge this weekend. Yeah, that was such a bad idea for many, many reasons, but it was amazing footage and it looked uh, really cool. You people will all see it. Yeah. It's tough. Yeah, on shoots, I try to find the right balance between eager to get shit done and being a leader and mm -hmm. staying loose. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I'm tipping more toward the getting shit done side and I start to get tense and stressed. And I love being able to keep it loose. It's so difficult to shoot and uh, and keep it loose like that. I, I agree, man. It's it's a weird thing. The alcohol, not going to lie, it does help. Yeah. But, yeah, I, I prefer not to do it. I, I prefer at least I, a lot less recently, uh, specifically. I wanted to keep an eye on Austin and make sure nobody was, like, going to murder him and, or he was going to drown or anything like that. So I, I didn't drink too much on this last shoot. But, yeah, look, look. 
the best thing about the internet, 100%, is that you'll find out that there's millions of people, or maybe thousands, or maybe even 30, but somebody else is probably obsessed with, uh, you know, the smells of the de- the male deodorants. Not the female ones? I stick only to my own gender's deodorant. Gotcha. I use my girlfriend's deodorant a lot. It has a s- more antiperspirant than mine does right now. So I use her sometimes, Victoria's Secret. It's good I, stuff. I use my mom's occasionally, too. Yeah, I, uh, it's fucking weird, man. And then... I make all these jokes about cock size, and I wrote that book. Yeah, you did. Girlfriend bangs yeah. a black dude, and maybe there was some obsessive energy about fucking cock size too. Even though mm. my dick's perfectly normal. Yeah. And even after seeing Austin's allegedly giant cock this weekend, I can maintain my cock is perfectly normal. <sighs> dude, uh, that, of that, course, didn't, man. that didn't mean to seem like a dig at Austin. Austin's giving me deer in the headlight looks over. No, actually, I got an accurate eight inch measurement the other day. So. Dude, no uh, way! Oh, I've wow. seen your limp cock. It doesn't matter what a limp cock looks. You're like. You're using the centimeter side. No. <laughs> it's eight centimeters. What is that in inches? Look, why do we have to fucking talk about cock size all the goddamn time? That's what I'm saying. I'm well, look, I, I want to know about this book. Look, I haven't read it or anything. I think it's something that a lot of white guys would probably would might want to read. And, it's the you best know? thing I wrote. Yeah, so why, look, was it just a thing where you were like, listen, I, I have to, you know, this is something I think about. This is something that actually happened. I broke up with this girl because of this, because she fucked a black guy. I need to write about this because it's true. And the truth is, is, is the art in writing a lot of the time, right? You really write something that's, you know, real to yeah. you. And that comes out and then somebody reads it and then that's yeah. magic. Yeah. So, but why? Why did you write that? Why did you not care about what people think? we're gonna think why why i think you nailed it leo when there's something that painful Mm -hmm. and that's immediate it it had just happened to give a little more background i was dating this chick wonderful Mm -hmm. big tits gorgeous face a sweetheart she went to ucla (laughs) smart has a bright future Mm -hmm. i don't know she might be doing drugs now I (laughs) i haven't talked to her in five years i heard that she had right before me been banging this black dude with a giant penis Mm -hmm. and I just had this mini psychological meltdown not a real meltdown I didn't quit my job I didn't move to Montana but it hurt I felt inadequate and she sensed that and started to think that I was pathetic and she cut me loose so I wrote this comedic book about it the pain is so real all the things that were going through my head were so fresh and clear and I could articulate them so well. And I just knew, even if that wasn't your personal insecurity, penis size, that other guys would be able to relate based on whatever their insecurity was. Yeah. How many purchases of that book do you have now? I don't know. It's it. Uh, it's the, they go okay now that no, the, the channel, yeah, yeah, the that people search them. Cool. What was I going to get at, though? What I say, though... At the end of a video I actually did, I took dick pills off the internet. So I brought the same thought or the same uh, mental fixation. That like, was an inspiring video. I it thought, was, it yeah. was a good video. Yeah. I, like I brought that over from the book to that video. The, what I say at the end of that is that, and I've heard Dr. Drew say this, any penis size insecurity for guys it's almost always just a product of their general insecurity. Yeah. And it's like a lightning rod for those insecurities and it attracts them and they mistake a symptom of insecurity for the cause of the insecurity. Yes. It all changed once I wasn't scrubbing down tables in a bar for a profession. Mm -hmm. It all changed when I wasn't living with nine guys in a hellhole Mm -hmm. in Daly City, skateboarding to work. Once I had a job that I actually cared about, and I was able to hold my head up high in social situations because I was proud of what I did. All that insecurity faded away. Yeah. I think, yeah, and you, you look like you're coming into your own at the right time. And it doesn't matter anymore. Your penis size is not going to bother you. And it's not even small. But what I also want to say, I think what I benefited from growing up was that I did connect with dudes that much until I got into college. I was very much then <laughs> fucking gay sex for yeah, like, yeah, fucking all that. But but I was always like this dude on the baseball team who was very like narcissistic and wanted to be the best. And not much that has often, changed. Not much has changed. Uh, oftentimes would would not make you know help me make friends. So I had I I would you know I I, would, I grew up in a way I was very an emotional kid and I would always pour out my emotions to women like. Starting like in, when I was a freshman in high school, I would say, because in middle school, I was definitely awkward. That's why me. your main theory for getting laid is tell a sob, the sob story. story. Right. So I would always tell like girls were are sensitive and, you know, anything you talk about 
they will act, will tell you the truth often of how they really truly feel. And yeah, women might use this big dick thing to kind of like demean guys when, when they're ignorant themselves. But there are so many women out there who literally can't even enjoy a penis that's like even slightly large. Like there's so many girls that prefer a regular size penis. There's even porn stars you'll hear like in interviews. It's not, a penis size is cool, I guess. Like visually it's cool when you have a big limp cock. Yeah. And all that. But it, at the end of the day, for sexual purposes, it doesn't really, really matter. Unless, you know, there's certain girls that enjoy it, just like there's certain girls that are not going to enjoy it. Do you it. do you see any truth in this? I'm starting to compile a theory that the chicks who seem most vocal about their requirement for a big cock are almost always fat. <laughs> Anybody almost, else notice that? Yeah, yeah, yes. I think it's because yeah. they just have a like... A little more flesh. I no. think like their flubber on their body starts to no. migrate down to the puss yeah. and it starts to detract from the sensitivity and they just need a big harpoon to penetrate their fucking <laughs> walrus beluga whale carcass. Yeah, oftentimes noticed, it's a big woman, yes. Dude, absolutely. like three or four fat chicks, one of whom we met this weekend at Havasu. This girl... If she were out on the mating market, the best she could hope for was like a 60-year-old alcoholic mailman as far as a husband. <laughs> the one that Austin made out the with? The one that I made out with. Oh, you <laughs> did. You did yeah. make out with him. She, uh, clearly, this girl would not be able to string in any sort of reasonable man for a relationship. Yeah. And she was telling us right off the bat that you better have a big fucking cock if you come over here talking to me. I'm exaggerating a little bit, yeah. but it seems like the world has been so cruel to this woman that the only thing she could give back is cruelty and try to take away from men's pride. Yeah, emasculate a dude. Yeah. Look, and and it you know, it works often when people, you know, are insecure about that and and it's it's unfortunate, but I think you grow to learn that it really doesn't matter and it's not something you should care about. Yeah, and my, and then my and si- that's the end of it. My sister, she fucked me up when I was younger. She told me three boyfriends down the line from this one guy she dated at UC Santa Barbara. I heard her drunk at a party talking to one of her friends and oh she's like, God. Kevin had the best dick. It was like a double magnum. Oh my God. And I heard that and maybe I got my sister to blame for all this. Wow. I was, I was at a gas station and then they mentioned magnums. Of course, our gentleman over there had a, a gig, but I was at a gas station. I think it was last night and I was picking up some kombucha and this black guy walks in pretty forcefully, and I'm like, "Oh shit, what's you know?" First thought, right? Yeah, right. right. And I, I was a little bit. I was like, "Dude," I, and then he goes, "Yo, man," he go. He looks at the the Indian man, of course, or is definitely it was definitely a Middle Eastern man behind the counter. He goes, do hey. Dante, do your Dante. He's like, "Yo, man, uh, hey, you got the motherfucker Magnums, man." He swore. <laughs> He did, dude. <laughs> he did. And the guy goes, I Poor don't dude. I don't think we do. He goes over and he checks and then he goes, No, no, we don't. And then he goes, Oh man, that's motherfucking bullshit, yeah. man. <laughs> and he leaves. I was like, that's hilarious, dude. That should that could be a bit that Austin does for sure. He just goes in, he's like, You got some magnums, man? Oh no, that's fucking bullshit. <laughs> they man. laugh at me whenever I buy them at dude, the store. I, I was, <laughs> dude, it was like one in the morning. This guy's just man, that's bullshit, man. <laughs> It is kind of bullshit. It is. Why did they, they have, have those everywhere? Come on. That's racial profiling yeah. right there. They're trying to keep a certain demo out of their store. <laughs> it's just a big black dude just walks in. It's like he told everybody <laughs> in that guest he had a big dick, dude. He, everyone knew he had a big dick, dude. We might have to reproduce that. And, and he that. peeled out, dude. He peeled out in his car. It's a challenger. He just like peels out of the gas station. <laughs> it sounds like a cartoon. Was, was he filming, dude? He it might sounds, have been filming. It sounds like a one-off joke in Family Guy. Exactly. It sounds like a Family Guy joke. That's There's so funny. One thing I want to circle back to, we were talking about that fat fucking walrus carcass girl in Havasu. Mm. There's something I read that's pretty interesting about women like that and their dating habits. I was reading about why short-term mating develops in women, what their strategy is versus men's. And the bottom line is what the three of us know. Men are programmed absolutely to seek short-term mates constantly. Women, they have to have a strategic reason for short-term mating. And one of their biggest reasons for doing it is they subconsciously think it's going to lead to long-term dating. Right. So most girls who are like, yeah, I'm a fucking slut. I'm in Kappa Kappa Gamma. I'm just trying to get some fucking dick this weekend. Mm-hmm. Yeah, girl. Mm-hmm. The first guy who buys them flowers after a one-night stand, uh, they're locked down. They're locked down. They yeah. use it as a strategy to get into a long-term relationship. Right. But another hypothesis, and it seems very reasonable to me, is that women who are far below a man in status and looks can still get that man's semen 
from short-term dating. Mm. Because, as the three of us also know, we'll fuck anything with a heartbeat. Yeah. So the theory is that if a lady is dating a janitor at a middle school, she's 45. Well, that's a little too old to have kids. She's 35. She's got a belly. She's got a tattoo of like a character from the Nightmare Before Christmas on her stomach. <laughs> I know those. <laughs> that seems like the most undesirable one. Yeah, that would be so bad. Yeah. She can go out to a fucking bar and maybe run into like a, a third string guy on the Denver Broncos. Yeah. And if he's really fucked up on Cavassier, he'll fuck he, her. He might bend her over in a broom closet. In fact, Drake did fuck a very, he has a kid with a very ugly stripper. There and you this go. This is a known thing. They always talk shit about to him. Inseminating about an ugly person well, probably brings me the most stress out of like anything. Well, yes. Else. As it should. Yeah, so that's what happened to Drake. But okay, but, I wouldn't but, say but, ugly, but ugly for Drake because he could probably yeah. he can get some great ladies. Probably. And now that chick, if she had a, a husband. So the ideal strategy for a woman is that that girl who's married to the janitor and gets fucked in a broom closet by the third stringer. She has that guy's child, and her or her janitor husband raises it as his own. Mm. So she gets the security of being married because she ain't going to be marrying that guy on the Broncos. He's yeah. too good for her. Yeah. But she gets the security of a relationship, but the genes of a higher status man. Fuck, dude, that that works. I guess that's our society now. I mean, that that definitely is something that's that's developing. If we're constantly evolution is happening to us, and we just don't know it, right? I mean, our, you know, in a hundred years, our, we're we're all gonna our seed, might take a little more than a hundred years. Maybe a little more than a hundred years. In a thousand and a million years, the humans are gonna look very different. Right, I think we're devolving. Devolving, maybe, but our heads are probably be bigger. Our bodies will be yes less useful. Although we're getting faster and we're getting stronger, so it's weird. But with drugs and shit. But anyway, it's a weird thing. Yeah, it could. The future could be less. You know, it could be more like nature to be you know for the woman to have sex with a bunch of for with you know to spread her seed too somehow but it, it is against kind of what you know you're supposed what nature has built right for us leo's gonna pass on some genetic mutation that lets his sons come in three seconds when they're getting blowjobs <laughs> it's a great it's he, a great mutation it's a lot of practice with but that. I, I wanted to bring something up about our culture now and about what, what these this Seeking arrangement site is very, very popular now with the youth. Did you hear about this? What's seeking arrangement? It's like uh, old guys go on there. This is, you know, according to my, my girlfriend has told me stories about her friends, but not uh, only that. My, uh, my, you believe my, that, Leo? You but, sucker. What do you mean? She's she has a very, very aggressively violent Middle Eastern father that goes through all of her, of her contacts. So. I'm pretty sure. You think there's no way she's on one of these in. seeking arrangement sites? I don't think there's any way that she's on any of these seeking arrangement sites. It sounds sites. like she's about to know a hell of a lot about them. Well, it's easy. They're, they're online. You can read articles about them, and they're all, uh, you know, and her friends still tell them about show the profiles. And what I've, I've seen some of the profiles. Anyway, they, they go on there, and they go to seek an arrangement with an older gentleman who has, gets to give an allowance, and in exchange, they give sexual. It's a sugar daddy site. It's a sugar daddy site. Anyway, so a lot of college girls, a lot of fucking apparently med students, law students, like really well-to-do, attractive women are on these sites, and they're blowing old guys for money. It's yep. a lot. It's yeah, a it's lot. It's a of lot, right? Here. Specifically during this generation. I know his, most his of generation. Them. Yeah, his generation. Mm -hmm. It's fucking nuts how many girls are out there doing this shit. It makes sense. How that's the number one thing, and it's not even just to get supported to get through med school. I'm sure a lot of these girls end up becoming attracted to the guys because the Maybe. number one thing women look for in men is fucking resources and status. Yeah, oftentimes. And if this guy carries himself well and doesn't have a huge stomach, I mean, I, I think these guys are oftentimes hideous. That's that's also yeah. another one of the things is one of the other big factors is hip to shoulder ratio. Yeah. If a guy has a good hip to shoulder ratio, meaning small waist, big shoulders, that communicates masculinity and power. And if yeah. the guy's got some status and resources to back it up... That's a good message for you guys. Get your shit together. Get a haircut. Take a shower. Yeah. Go to work on time. Yeah. And keep off the belly fat. And yeah. You'll be fucking girls till the grave. Do some wide grip pull-ups. All right. And dips. Chest up. Pull-ups will expand your chest. Make your back. Get that V. That mm. V shape with the pull-ups. Wide grips? Wide grip. I've been yeah. doing them narrow. That's fine. Up. Those are really good for for the abs and, and the lats here. But yeah, if you if you do wide grip, it'll be better for expanding. It'll kind of get you that posture. I need some chest expansion. Yeah, yeah, a little chest expansion. There's some What's happening with do. these sites? But like, what do you think? Like, this is, these girls are going to be somebody's fucking wives. That scares me. What if you find is out? Is it though? Wait, what? 
Is it that scary? I mean, is well, it? What do you mean? Like, let's say you 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 go for you think that's it's a nice girl. She works at a law firm, and then you find out one day she blew some like you know a handful of guys for money in college. That that wouldn't bother you. I, I think it'd know. be a game. I think I'd be over. I'd be. It would, I would have to leave the relationship. It's a thin line between blowing a guy directly for money, like a prostitute, and being with a guy and being attracted to a guy because he has a lot of. No, money. I'm talking about she. This guy. She. This guy made her gag. The the stories I've heard, like this girl was like she threw up like right after blowing this dude. Oh, well, now I'm hard. <laughs> you always do this to me, Leo. I always get hard on the podcast. Oh God! And yeah, the guys they, they they notice it and they put it the fucking time in the comments, dude. Every time they're like, Danny, God, there's definitely a, a homosexual following. If you're, if you're gay, comment below. I'd like to know. I've got a few homosexual DMs already. Oh, I'm sure, yeah, well, Austin. I, <laughs> well, after this video, buddy, they're only gonna climb. So you would have you asked your girlfriend how many guys she's been with? Yeah, we we the, the girl told us on the on the fucking. Uh, when we met her, her friend told us, and that was the same number. Who's us? Uh, the, remember her friend he interviewed at the, university, the UCLA vid? She told us that day? Yeah, that day. She told me, at least. I thought it was on camera, but... Can I you say how many it is? Uh, no, I'd rather not, but it's not a lot. I can tell you after. It's a low amount. Do you accept the girls lie about that number? I do, I do, but it makes sense. I think she had a long-term boyfriend in college, too, so... Uh. It makes sense. I mean, look, she might have lied. I'm, I'm still in the process of investigating. If there's, if one of the stories don't check out, <laughs> she's out. People get a lot of beef about <clears throat> their girl's exes, but at the same time, like those exes are the ones that kept your girlfriend off the streets. So it's <laughs> yeah. Like, no, I don't mind the ex. The ex was a, a stud <laughs> swimmer at UCSB, and he was the nicest dude of all time, apparently. And and he like you know he was one of those white guys that went to Europe to find himself for two years for not for two years for like two months during the summer and which means he's he probably like read, gay so that's read, good. A, read a book a week he's very intelligent you know? so you, you should be intimidated oh well intelligence doesn't intimidate me I have street smarts it's like the person at Blockbusters who rented the DVD before you kept it clean. <laughs> didn't scratch it, it up great, before he yeah. turned it in. Look, it, now, nowadays, you just got to find a girl with low mileage because, you you know, no mileage is tough. She's always going to wonder, you know, what it, what it would be like with somebody else, I think. You know, that's just human nature. And I think it's, you know, low mileage is what you got to go for. If I find no mileage, I think that that's it just, it's difficult. Nowadays, I, think I don't think sanity, if you go for sanity, you're in a good spot. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know if I told you this. I did tell you this. That one of Mia's ex boyfriends tweeted at one of the PKA guys. One of the PKA That's guys funny. tweeted that, hey, Danny Mullen was on this week. It was a great show. And one, some guy tweeted, like, I'm pretty sure he's fucking my ex, but I still love that guy. <laughs> and I looked the That's guy awesome. up. And I was like, hell yeah, I backed this guy too. Handsome? And I went and looked him. Uh, he looked like a good looking guy. And he had a, the only evidence was that I boy, could see. Though, was he young? The only evidence I could see that might have actually validated his story, because who knows if he was fucking lying, was he had like a 49ers blanket in the background of one of his pictures, and she's okay. from the Bay Area. Gotcha. You're totally right, though, Leo. Yeah. You can spend all your life looking for a virgin, but her dad probably beat her with a rolled-up newspaper, and yeah. she's been going to the, the, the Latter-day Saints church at 5 a.m. every day of the week. She's nuts. Yeah. Fucking one, two, I, I mean... I was dating a girl in college who'd had sex with like two guys and she was a little fucking nutty. Yeah, there's then again, a lot of girls. I, I also dated a girl in college who had sex with one guy and she was completely off her rocker. And then again, yes. I fucked a girl in college who they threw her a party when she'd fucked her hundredth guy at UCLA. Holy now shit. she lives in South Africa. She has a shaved head and she's doing ecstasy every night. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah, you got to find the middle ground. The sanity. I, I like that. I think a healthy American college girl is just out of curiosity if she's and even if she's in a relationship, she'll probably or after she's in a relationship, we'll say her single years, she's gonna fuck probably on the high end five guys a year. Mm -hmm. You think that's reasonable? I would say that's reasonable. Yeah, absolutely. You do the math, eighteen to twenty five when you meet her, whenever. I mean, she could be up healthily into the double digits. Absolutely. I don't think that's a deal breaker for me. That's. Fine, yeah, and and to each his own, and I don't think it would be a deal breaker, deal breaker for me either. I think uh, you know, once a girl is, I disagree. I think it would be a deal breaker for you. Like five girls, uh, five guys a year for four years, so twenty dudes. Hollywood, California seems like she's come around. We're gonna give her forty bucks, get her on the line, talk this thing out. 
Fuck yeah. I'm sorry. We'll call my mom on another podcast. All right, sounds good. I know if we called my mom, she'd listen back to the whole show. And I've talked about my deodorant obsession, my penis thing. Your penis thing. We'll have her listen to another episode. Some kind of borderline ridiculous things you did to women when you were scumbag. You're still scum. Oh, just putting a finger up the ass in a Mexican whorehouse? Yeah. She wouldn't be that upset with that. <laughs> she read my book where I talk about getting a massage with a happy ending. Oh, and a lady God. puts her finger up my ass and that up my ass. Your parents are the definition of, of solid. Like, they, they support you no matter what. Even Your dad had to have a call with you when you were approaching 30 and you had made you were still asking for money. He had to have the talk. But other than that, like, they were they're very supportive. He came into my room one day when I was reading a book. It was like 3 p.m. and I was just laying in bed reading and he just lost his shit. And I just graduated UCLA. Not just. I'd been out for about a year. Uh-huh. He says, you need to get a fucking job. I'm wow. the one who's about to retire. I should be in bed reading all day. Oh, wow. And he didn't understand. That was the job. That was the job. I just needed to make it into the job. Wow. I mean, my dad lost it about a year after I graduated college too and I was at home. That's interesting. Why? Why? I guess they they have a fear. They they maybe they visualize uh, visualized us being complete losers. I think my well, dad they still think thinks. if you get your kids into college as an adult, that uh, I mean, think about it. I feel like for parents, all they care about is that other people think they're not shithead parents. Sure. And they just want to check the social boxes, which is get him through high school without stabbing somebody, get him into college, and if he graduates college. Then he's going to get a job and marry abroad and give you right. a grandkid and you don't have to worry about him anymore. Right. But after the graduate college thing, you and I, we did something horribly wrong in their opinion. Yeah, we did. We went off the grid, decided to find greatness. Austin Schlosser couldn't even give his parents the respect to go to college. Yeah. I, I, I went for a year and a half and then I left. Uh, just junior college? Yeah, I didn't even finish I, junior I, college. I was suggesting on the road trip that he should be in, in, a, in a, at least one or two classes a semester out here. You know, just fin- get your AA, and then we'll see what Did what you happens. say finna? No, I said finish. Oh. Uh, I said, did I say finna? There's no way I said finna. It wouldn't have made sense. Hello? Hollywood, California. What's up, Hollywood? I, I, I didn't meet you, but... Am I supposed to be on the video or no? Oh, no, let me... You don't have to be. You can cut it off. You're just looking up my nostril at this point. You can say hi to our camera setup, our producer, Austin. Hello, hello, what's up? What's up? Hollywood, yeah, you can mute your video or cut off your camera. You look great, by the way, but I just, again, I'm insecure about my nostril hair. All right, hold on. Let me, uh, hold on. Uh, or I can just flip the phone. That works, too. Hollywood, you're fine as is. Let's talk, though. There's been a lot of bad blood. The fans are getting really excited about it, so I don't think it's all <laughs> negative. Uh, no, it's, it's not all negative. Well, of course you feel that way. It's not all negative for you. you you've been having a field day with this shit, Daddy. Hell oh, yeah. shit. I know you have. Oh, yeah. I, I Hollywood? No, I was going to say something mean and make a joke, but I didn't mean to ever upset you. I thought you were a lovely person. As you talked about over direct message with me, we were recalling history, things like the Tuskegee experiments. You complimented my shoes. I think you even said you liked my hair. I thought you were a beautiful person. Yeah, I mean, I thought I thought everything was all good. And look, let's be clear. Let's let's kick out the gate with some honesty here. Uh-huh. Um you, your fans tend to think that I am upset about you kissing her. Like maybe for the first like day or two, that's what this shit was about. Mm. But that is honest. You move, past, you move past that. You get over that part. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Then you move on to the part where you're like, "Hey, man, I was cool with this dude, and he just kind of like slapped me in my face with my shit." Like, you know what I mean? That more so was what it was about. You're referring like, Hollywood to the sample of your song "Pull Up" in the video. Like you, the way you did it, it's not, it's not what, you ever heard the saying, it's not what you do, it's how you do it? I have. Okay, so, there's a way that you do things. You can fucking infringe upon somebody's copyrights all day, all fucking day, and it doesn't make any difference. They'll be happy. You know, like old artists, when people sample their music, they're happy somebody sampled it. Mm. But, it's like, you gotta say, hey, is this cool? Is, can I go ahead and do this? You gotta, you know what I mean? You can't just surprise people in the in the manner that you used it was kind of like i say a sense of a manipulation because my song is not about beating up dudes because they disrespected my <laughs> 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 and you took it 
took that part and of course capitalized on it but that's not the point you didn't disrespect her per se she made a choice to do what she did had you been some dude that was pressing her on the street and harassing her then that'd be different you know what i mean but no it wasn't that wasn't the case so i can't be mad at you you weren't disrespecting her so to say that or to use that part is kind of it was kind of off because i'm like dude you ain't, you're not a stranger who ran up and slapped her on the ass or nothing like that. She made a conscious choice to do what she did. So I took that up with her. And then you had the nerve. You got a big, you got a, you must got some big balls, huh, Danny? I physically he does do. have a large testicle. Yeah. I have a, I have a big nutsack. I do, as you said in your diss track, have a pencil dick. But my nuts, Hollywood, California, if you could feel these things. That's all I have to say. <laughs> Hollywood. <laughs> he just put the camera on his balls. That's basically where it's aimed right now. You're totally right. But I want you to understand that as a guy who comes to Prim, Nevada during the peak of the coronavirus hysteria and starts asking girls to make out with him, sometimes I make strange decisions, rash decisions in the name of comedy. I have to turn these videos out in my editing windows three to four days. And I don't even really think about the consequences. I don't think about who I'm hurting or upsetting. You're totally right. Sometimes I just put shit out there and I did something like cut that song, pull up to make it seem like I was, um, uh, how to put this, like everything you threatened to do to your wife, you clearly didn't do to me because I kissed her and you didn't come beat me up or put a cap in me or whatever. So I was saying with that edit, ha ha, Hollywood, California, I got one over on you. And, and you're right, that was disrespectful. You're doing what the song is referring to. You did not do what the song is referring to. The song is referring to some sucker being disrespectful, calling her out of her name. Yeah without permission things like that that's disrespect if she make a conscious choice to kiss you how the fuck i'm gonna get mad at you you know what i mean that 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 that's not the case i'm not no jealous ass weirdo you know what i mean that's not that's not the case we you know let me just tell you guys for the fans we are polyamorous we have had couple we've had you know mm. other girlfriends other partners we do our thing so if she wanted to kiss a dude if that was her choice and she you know what i mean I, i'm not mad at her about that I was upset that she did it during a pandemic when we have small children in our house. If you really want to know the truth, I have a child in my house that has certain conditions and she can't get sick. It could be very bad. So mm. that's what I'm thinking. Like, mm. my, if you put my kid at health risk huh. for, for, you know, for some hee hee ha ha. It's ridiculous. That's what I was upset about. Hollywood, you know? how did you initially find out that we had, in fact, kissed your wife? Did she tell you? Did some shithead no, fan no, no, start commenting? Said, oh, no, she didn't tell me. That's what I was Oh, saying. that's wrong. Is that she didn't tell me. She just came home, acted like nothing happened, and then a week later, I see this this uh, this uh video, and I forgot who presented it to me, to be honest with you. Um, Probably some fan in your direct messages, I imagine. Uh, yeah, yeah, I believe so. I, I believe so. Um, <laughs> some asshole. Somebody brought it up to me, and I was like, what? And then I went and checked it out, and that was it. But uh, I had no idea. I didn't think you were going to put it up that quick either. Oh, I appreciate that. I am pretty swift with my editing. I'm I'm sorry, Hollywood. We've been doing a show for two hours. My my humor is a little off right now. I'm not I'm not as funny as I was at the start. So that obviously must have been distressing. And then did you go right over to your wife? Were you upset with her? Did you guys have well, some I, sort of I fight? It like right in front of her. Like they sent it to me, and she was sitting next to me. And I was like, the fuck? You know what I mean? Mm. And no, I did not hit her. Mr. likes to imply that someone is domestic. <laughs> not what I meant. I meant a verbal fight, Hollywood. Bad. Of course, you know, there was a verbal conversation. Oh, I mean, you know, the, what else are we going to talk with sign language? Oh, but, no, fucking, you know, it she wasn't anything crazy. I just, I just said, hey, you know. Why the fuck would you do that? Like, what the fuck were you thinking? Now, yeah, I might have yelled, raised my voice, but there was no physical call her any names? Or nothing like that. Leo, my co-host, I'm sorry, I'm not sure if you're familiar with him, Hollywood. He wants to know... This is a silly question. If there were any names... I just want to know what kind of names Hollywood, were. can I ask you a silly question? It's my co-host, it's not me. Leo, the one with the long hair, right? Yeah, the yes, good-looking guy. He wants to know if you called your wife a whore to her face. <laughs> I don't know. 
know, in the midst of being angry, I might have said a lot of shit. <laughs> <laughs> What's the worst? I got a laugh out of my producer. What's the worst thing you said? Uh, I'd have fucking gonna kiss a motherfucker with no lips. <laughs> It, was that a reference to my race? I don't like that. No, I mean to you, I think. <laughs> that mean, that just means white people have thin lips. Not right? all white people have thin um, lips. Yeah. Look at Austin. I actually have luscious lips, Hollywood. You should take a look, a closer look at some of my Instagram photos. Ask her about the street look, cred. Hey man, in the grand scheme of lips in my community, you have no lips, bro. So <laughs> that's all you guys are looking for? You're just a couple of lip junkies? I have more to offer. It's enticing, you know, nice, nice, juicy lips, you know. What about enticing. his baby blues? What about his baby blues? Hollywood, did I take off my shades and show you what I got? Oh, my God. Why are you guys so hell-bent on these eyes? <laughs> She watches a lot of the content. <laughs> it's just a, it's a move that's worked a few times, Hollywood. I got some questions about her, her street cred in the rap community. Well, let's, we're still almost right. to the end of this. So, Hollywood, what I noticed, though, and I was confused why you were so mad, because it seemed to me like the fans were reacting really positively to your song. I went over to your YouTube video and the fans, they did crack some jokes. Ah, oh, Danny Mullen freed the slaves and he freed your wife's tongue. But then they would say underneath, but no joke, this song slaps or I'm really digging this track or something like that. Did you notice that? It seemed like a lot of people were into the song. No, it's, it, and, and that's what I also want to say. It wasn't that they were completely negative, but you got to understand for somebody like me that comes from not the same world is seemingly you or your fans we don't take to these type of things as easily so when people are like per referencing my personal life and, and all that stuff i don't i don't know how to handle that that doesn't i'm i'm ready to like spaz out and like tell them to pull up since y'all talking yeah you heard my <laughs> pull up I mean, that's, that's that's where i'm at with it like you want to talk that shit you fucking keyboard warrior slide yeah, yeah. How, well you know, the, your fuck. That's why your lead single was "Pull Up." You, you fuck. Know. You tell motherfuckers to pull up. It makes sense. And and I'm like, you know, but I I can't do that because I have to understand that your fans don't come from the same world as me, and they enjoy that. When I tell them to pull up, they're like, yeah, exactly. Look, she's mad. She's triggered. Like so. Right. Mm -hmm. you know, I have to realize, like, look, this is this is what they go do. But what upset me was, like I said, all the references to my personal life and all that I just I can't I'm not ready for that like I you know what I mean you think you understand what fame is and the internet and trolls and all the stuff but I can definitely say mm. your fans deserve a troll award like if there was a troll award they're good they what they do to get that shit like they yeah. would be ranked number one at that shit you oh, got yeah. some loyal motherfuckers on your team I will say yeah that. I appreciate that Hollywood and I appreciate them we're pointing yes. the cameras right now I think Hollywood though that a lot of people are going to watch this and I think the way you've conducted yourself on this podcast, people are going to have some newfound respect for you. They could tell that you were, I'm sure, a lovely person in that video we shot. But then the excitement of me kissing your wife, it was such an unlikely situation. And then me using the song Pull Up, that got to them. They just had to immediately flip to Instagram on their phone, find you, and just say some impulsive comment. But I think... They already like your music, and after hearing this, they're going to start to like and respect you as a person, too. I hope so, you know. I hope so, because I, I tell people, you know, even when I talk to them, because I've had a conversation with quite a few of your your, your fans in my DM. Uh, some of <laughs> them start out crazy, and then they actually turn out to be decent, respectable conversations. Hmm. And one thing that they always say is, hey, man, we're just, we're just big fans, you know what I mean? It's not personal, hmm. you know what I mean? And... I, I agree, you know, that they're fans, but, hey, man, what you got to do, I'm going to be real with you, Danny, you got to tell these kids, man, mm. they got to watch some of the stuff they say, because... They're not getting, I, I, you know, are they getting racial? What are they doing? Yeah, yeah, they are. Oh, uh, that's you not know, good. You know, I've got, I, I screenshotted on, the DMs. I've been called everything from a porch monkey to uh, being, being told being told that you know well your people have the lowest literacy rate in the country and the lowest we're, economic standing hey that's we're not okay with that hey well stockton is a city that's just an hour north of my hometown it has the lowest literacy rate and it's primarily white and mexican so i can say yeah. for a fact hollywood that that doesn't stand up with my we don't what i know we don't condone any you know, of those I things mean, I guys what i'm just saying as you have don't this do that. great platform and these awesome followers if you told them hey man 
all that racial stuff, you know what I mean? That's yeah. not cool. They they would they would respect that, you know what I mean? Because, you know, it, listen, and I'm gonna tell you another thing, because I told you I wasn't gonna bullshit with you. Uh huh. So I gotta ask you a question. Yeah. What the fuck is up with that sweater? What's up with the slogan, man? Danny Mullen free the slaves? Yeah, man. Does that offend you? Yes, it does, man. Hmm. Why does it offend you, you Hollywood? I, I know you don't actually interact with as many black people. So I'm going to be, I'm going to, I'm going to take the one moment. I never usually do this. I don't use my, myself as a, a speaker for all black mm -hmm. people. I'm not the national spokesperson, but I will say mm -hmm. it's such a volatile time in this country. That sweater could get the shit kicked out of one of them kids. Hmm. You raise a good point, but you know, what's interesting. Hollywood is Baina, a, a black guy who's in our crew and who appeared later on in the video you were in. He has Danny Mullen free the slaves in the bio of his Instagram. Right. So there are some you know, black people who love it. You know what though? I seen that dude and Danny, I'm gonna be real with you. We ain't the same type of black. So for the type of black that I am and the type of angry black that we have going on right now in this country, that sweater is very walking the fine line of getting the shit kicked out yeah. of one of them kids. I would not wear it to a protest in South Central right now. I admit that. Kids, don't do that. Yeah, please don't. Nowhere. Not South Central, Minneapolis, anywhere is not a good idea. Keep those for when the shit dies down. But even in then, you've got to be, you know, there's people who really fought for my ancestors' freedom that really died for that. You can't, you, you can't take credit for that. I know it's funny and all, but like, what about the people who were, one of your fans told me you were the real Frederick Douglass. You know how dangerous <laughs> What is funny. wrong with you guys? <laughs> Jesus, but guys. Come on. Hollywood, that's a funny joke. You heard us burst out laughing right there. Funny. Obviously, I don't have a time machine. I'm not black and I don't have an afro. Obviously, I'm not the real Frederick Douglass. That's just some silly humor. But I'm just saying, man, at some point, you know, oh. even comedians got to be like, hey, man, some shit, you got to you gotta know when to hit the switch. That's all I'm saying. You got to know when to hit the switch because you would hate to hear that one of these kids got their ass beat yep. because of that sweater. Hollywood... My fans, despite how they appear in Instagram direct messages, they're actually really smart people we found. I'm sure they're smart yes, enough to not wear those out yeah. into the danger zone. But Hollywood, I mean, I'll say right now on the phone with you that I absolutely condemn anybody who's sending you racial shit, calling you a porch monkey over Instagram. We're civilized people. Obviously, we think that's complete fucking bullshit. bullshit. I just, doesn't it also piss you off though, Hollywood? All these fucking white, rich college girls who are posting a bunch of air-handed, pro-black um, yes. messages right now that are just doing Absolutely. it to get likes and attention and don't give right. a shit about the issues. Right. I don't want to appear as one of those people. <laughs> Absolutely. But see, I, I'm not, I'm a little bit different, you know what I mean? Um, you know, you guys caught the, the song Pull Up and all that, but you didn't really catch the message. I'm I'm sort of like one of those like I don't know if you heard the old school group like De La Soul. I'm one of those type rappers. I'm kind of like about motivating you know my community and, and shit like that. I'm I not even it. like I'm not into the violence and the drug music. I don't talk about those things. I understand. You know, um, so when I you know when I I, I people like that you know the Beckys who want to you know get attention or the ones that are out there uh, causing chaos, robbing you know, looting stores and, and then letting us suffer the consequence for it. I don't, I don't, I don't even acknowledge that because I'm so aware of this that I would never allow myself. That's why you'll never, you won't see me out protesting. Nah, I don't, I don't participate in that because I'm not going to get caught up and give the police, you know, something to take me to jail for. I'm not, and I don't want you using me as a Mimi, even though I heard you did it. I heard you use me as a Mimi. I don't know what that means. I can't a say meme. for sure. A meme. You use me as a meme. Like you made a little thing. I heard somebody in your camp or something made a meme. I'm, out of me. I'm sure somebody in my camp did, or I wouldn't call it my camp, in my army probably your did. Army. But I don't make memes, Hollywood. Yeah, so He doesn't like that humor. The extent of my use of you, and I will call it use, was the pull-up yeah, edit I made where I was making out with your wife over top of the music video. But nah, man, it's all good, though. I just want to be clear. We all good, man. I, I really don't hate you or anything because they probably think I hate you. I don't hate you. No, no. I've gathered that you haven't hated me at all, but I understand that you're frustrated. And I can tell that some days you're more frustrated with me than others. And I just attribute that to the fans being particularly shitheaded that day. Yeah, extra trolly one day than the other. Mm -hmm. But 
I mean, for the most part, I mean, I've met some cool people through this. Um, I'm not, like I said, I'm not mad. I just, I just wish, you know, that, you know, there would have been a conversation before it all happened and, you know, that we could have just done it a little bit more tactfully. I just want you to think about being a little bit more tactful and think about also your use of the N word in your videos. That ain't cool either. Well, I had Barbershop Evan there to sanction it. Man, there's no <laughs> such thing. <laughs> uh, I'll try to look out for it, Hollywood. I'm, but I'm just asking, I'm just saying, man, because it's, it's a volatile time in this country. Oh, yeah, especially mm-hmm. he isn't going to be saying it anytime soon. I want to see you somewhere and want to attack you. Okay? Ho- yeah. Hollywood, I was talking earlier on the show, and this is not really related to mine and your beef, which I don't think is beef anymore. I really like talking to you. You seem like a good person. But I was saying earlier that all these riots, the media just shoving everything down our throat. Oh, it's blacks versus whites. It's cops versus blacks. And the riots, I went out yesterday to try to get dinner with my girlfriend. And the tension in the air is so palpable that I found myself not even being able to look black people in the face because I felt like they all hated me. Do you think the way the media is handling this the way people are taking to the streets is good for race relationships. Do you view this as a positive or a negative? Um, I think it's absolutely negative because I am totally against liberal media. I think they are the biggest race baiters on the face of the earth. You're going to love our um, producer, Austin. Uh, they, uh, they purposely, you know, have painted this picture in this manner. Uh, but it doesn't take away from there is a problem yeah. with the police and mm. the over abuse of power. Um, mm. but I won't allow them to tell me that all white people are my enemy. No, I'm not going to let you do that. Mm. But I don't care if you're a white cop or a black cop. If you're a fucking cop, you're a fucking cop. You know what I mean? And that's my thing. I don't give a fuck. I'm not going to say, oh, if I see a black cop, do I feel less fear because he's black? No. You know what I mean? Because I've been jacked up by them too for no reason. So no, I, I'm not going to, you know, but I don't feel that the media is helping it. You're absolutely right. They're not helping it. And I feel like if they really do want to help, they would tell everybody, look, let this shit pan out. Now I would understand if they found the dude not guilty and they wild out after that, but at least let's see what happens before you go and start smashing windows and i feel like a lot of people are are, like i said i believe antifa is a big part of this this nonsense and they're the ones instigating it fuck antifa yeah they're the ones you know because you keep catching like you know white kids inside of like stores burning shit and they didn't even take anything Mm -hmm. if it was up we'd take something Mm -hmm. they burned down the dmv and they caught like a little white boy with like you know what i mean he has no purpose of being here some of these people are paid to be in these riots and shit So I don't trust none of that shit. So no, hell no. The media is not helping. Fuck the liberal media. They're full of shit. Mm, So you're saying, Hollywood, that wait for the end of the legal proceedings, because it sounds like they're going to crucify this guy who committed the murder. It sounds like everything's going wrong for him. Everybody's condemning him. So you're saying that that, um, rioting was was not an appropriate response because justice, it seems like, is going to be served? Right. It's, I feel like let it pan out. Uh-huh. If they, if it turned out to be a Rodney King situation where all officers involved were found not guilty, no matter the video, that's what no happened with Rodney King, right? Is, that'd be a different right. case. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Rodney King was not. This case, that's crazy. I mean, I think even President Trump sees that this dude is a blatant fucking murderer. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? So there shouldn't be much room for. Uh, anything but guilty. I think what people are upset about, though, is that he got third-degree murder instead of at least second. We can't say first because it wasn't per se premeditated. Mm -hmm. But third-degree murder, what is that? You basically said, like, he ran over a dog or something. Like, it just didn't... It It, wasn't strong enough. And I think that's what people are upset about. The charges were not strong. I saw a lawyer break that down. They could still put him in jail for a long time, even third-degree. Well, let us hope so. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. We're hoping for the best, yeah. Hollywood... This has been a great talk. I really enjoyed this and appreciated it. I'm glad we could get you on the phone, clear the air, and who knows? Maybe we'll shoot something together in the future. I roll through Vegas a lot. They definitely want to see. They definitely want to see a, a video or something. That that's all they've been talking about is. So when are you guys gonna do a track together? So what's up? You a track to together would be amazing. Remix a pull up. Hollywood makes a pull up. How about I book us a suite? You, me, and your wife get on a plane for Hawaii. Little uh, little menage a trois in a tropical island. <laughs> I should have known that some 
something was gonna come at the end of that. I should have fucking done. Hey, I'll get some collagen in my lips. You'll be looking at me a lot different. I don't want them Kylie Jenners. I'm good. Oh. He likes the net. She likes the natural, even if they're <laughs> all right, not, not quite Jenner's her size. Thing. All right, Hollywood. I'll keep my lips natural, and uh, I won't book those plane tickets. But hey, yeah, let me ask you though, what you think about the disc? How, how did you feel about it? That's what I gotta ask you. How did you feel about it? I thought it was fucking hilarious. I liked it. I any kind of controversy I can get going, I'm I'm fucking stoked on it. And uh, what did you? I mean, your wife didn't jerk me off or anything. How do you know I got a pencil dick? I know, and it's so funny because they'd be like, oh, he ran off, he did the steroid. I'm like, did y'all see them leave together? They book a room that night or something? Tell me, did I miss something? <laughs> but, uh, I mean, I don't know. I, I just, it, I'm going to be honest with you. I just went upon the white guy stereotype, and I just ran with it. That's good. That's a little prejudice, <laughs> but uh, yeah. I can forgive you. I, I do have a Danny Mullen for you, the slave shirt. Exactly. So, hey, it was it was tit for tat, man. Yeah. Yeah, well, you have to be right. I am more of a length guy than a girth one, that's for sure. The gentleman sitting to my left, I've heard a black girl call his penis a Coke can penis. So, yeah. I mean, if you'd wrote in your diss track about him, it would be no good. But I, you kind of nailed it with me. It worked out. The stereotype, pl- it played out perfectly. Well, I don't know, because I, I don't know how many of your fans have seen your penis. Oh, all of them. They, they, they all have, yeah. I don't know if they can, can, can judge or tell me if I'm right or not, but... Nonetheless, I, I don't know anything about Danny's penis. Just so yeah. make it known, I don't know anything about it. Well, I'll send you a penis picture after I hang up on this call, okay, baby? Can I send you one back? <laughs> 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 you got it. An even exchange. I, hey, I sent one of your fans one. They kept saying something, so I, I took a picture of my strap. I have three different sizes, and I said, which one do you want? You nice. have three different strap-ons you use on your wife. Uh, and maybe some other people. You never know. Can you tell me the dimensions of these strap-ons? Oh, God. Um, there's one that's like, uh, five inches, nice. one that's seven and one that's like about six with a vibrator. In oh, it. wow. See, so those are nice and modestly I sized. I told you. I thought I was about to feel real insecure. I told you, bud. No, no, we're not trying to bust it's a great up episode. the Brooklyn Bridge on a bitch. Mm. Yeah, dude. We don't, they don't need that Brooklyn Bridge, uh, Danny. <laughs> wow, Hollywood. <laughs> We don't want to bust her open like that. Okay. There you go, dude. So, so would you say those dildos you're using, those are pretty much average male penis sizes? Yeah, yeah. But, you know, what they say, uh, it's the, the motion of the ocean. I used to have a, a ridiculous size one, but then I realized, like, most of the time they're like, oh. Ow, ow, ow. So you got to get something a little bit more This is a natural. great day. Wow. This is a great day. Hollywood, we were talking about this earlier in the podcast, having wow. the age-old penis See, size debate. I told you when you talk to women, man, they'll tell you the, the truth. The woman really can't, she can't probably take anything more than a seven and a half. They force themselves to take more. There They're out of you Austin. go, dude. Hey, well, Hollywood, this has been such a heartwarming note to wrap up yeah, on. Yeah, this is amazing. <laughs> talking about dick size i love it it's not a danny mullen podcast or video without it Uh, hollywood this has been great i'll send you a message on instagram right after we get off the phone but we're wrapping up our podcast here and i just want to say from los angeles all the way out to you and prim have a beautiful evening thank you you too danny and uh you know shit anytime you come out here again and you're not looking to make an ass of the whole prim let me know (laughs) you got it baby oh yeah maybe i'll come over with a bottle of What's the stuff that black people drink? Oh, Hennessy. Hennessy. Hennessy? Yeah. Some Henny. And you know what's funny is that the only people I've ever heard Alize. of Hennessy is white. Really? Yeah, that's true. The name Hennessy comes from white people. Oh, right. Yeah. Alize. Alize. How about some that's Alize? Like, that sounds like a cheap hooker. Fuck, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want no Alize. That's like the black people name their kids after cars. And like, <laughs> <laughs> ladies, and, and uh, we got Porsche here, and... Uh, uh, fuck Porsche, whatever the fuck. I don't even know how you pronounce it. But um, yeah, if you come out again, make sure you come come by and say hi. Hell yeah. Hey, Hollywood. I'll look forward to meeting you one day as well. Hollywood, this is Leo. Who's that? Uh, is that Leo? That's yeah. Leo the Tavia next to me. Yeah, man. I've, I've been seeing you in my stories. I see you watching it. I yeah, yeah. You got some... You. Absolutely, you're you're very uh, controversial right now, and I love it. And you, uh, I think you did, you did great. And uh, hopefully it got you some good promotion for your videos. Oh, yeah, man. It's all good. Like I said, hopefully everybody knows, you know, that's all. It ain't no, it ain't no bullshit. Hell I appreciate yeah. y'all, man. Y'all have a good night. You too. All righty, man. Take it easy, Hollywood.